some dude, you know, fucking snake oil salesman passing through. He's like, you ever yeah. been to the future? And obviously, I know the answer to that one is no. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, you ever been to the past? And I was like, yeah, I've been to the past, man, in my mind, you know? Yeah. And he's like, we well, ever been to the future and the past? And I was like, nah. uh and he's like, let me, let's go out to this place and let's get you some shrooms. So we went out there, literally picked half a garbage bag of mushrooms, right? Whoa. And this dog came, at one point this dog gets into this field. I mean, we're on probably about 30 acres, so it's wide open. This dog, and he's just roaring across this field. And we're out in the middle of the field. At he you, comes coming at you? Yeah. Oh, and I mean, so I'm running, bro, as fast as I can. Can you believe how packed it is? It was mobbed. It was the first time UFC had been in Columbus. And that was the fight we saw. Randy Couture beat Tim Sylvia for the heavyweight title. Moved up from light heavyweight to heavyweight. Way past his prime. Everybody thought, no chance. And he beat him in the first round. Then everyone was like, oh my God. Randy could do it. He won one round. And then he won the second round. And we were all like, well, dude, if he wins one more round... He, he'll win by decision. And then he won the third round. And this guy's fucking 40. He's 40, beating t- t- beating 3 nothing, beating the heavyweight champion of the world. Two rounds left. Now everyone started going crazy because all we realized is if he just survives two more rounds, he wins. Randy Couture, Captain America, comes out of fucking nowhere as an old man, a George Foreman type. And he won round four and five. The place was shaking. It was it was the most hyper fight I've ever seen in America. The biggest one of all time was um, was in Brazil, and all the Brazilians chanted, "You're gonna die when the Americans would come in." Um, okay, so anyway, so I'm here, and they did they did it at the same time as the Arnold Classic back then, and then um, and then um, that's it. They kind of stopped doing it at the same time. I think they did it the next year, and then that was it. But I'm here right now in Columbus for the Arnold Classic. No, I'm for playing. I was playing the Funny Bone. Um, but it was yesterday. So today everyone's at the airports. And it is a parade of steroids. Women with like normal shaped legs and massive bodies. They look like, like cartoons by that guy who did the lean back. R. R- Crumb. They look like R. Crumb. Um... What's it called? It's cartoons. Anyway, um, so welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. Uh, I'm the host. My name is Ari uh, Shafir. Um, that's, that's my show. And, um, you know, we usually choose a different topic to cover every week. And this week, I decided to cover hiking. My friend Theo Vaughn has a new special out on Netflix right now called, uh, oh, fucking, what's it called? Don't be offended. Excuse this. Motherfucker, I should know this. Um, but um, he climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. And I've gotten really into hiking lately. And we, should we just talk about talking about hiking? Because he's into it. Um, so we took a hike. We went to this like sort of not well-known hike in L.A., uh, and I don't really want to say what it is. If I did on here, fucking my fault. But no one goes there. It's not like Runyon. No one goes to this one. So um, we went up there and um, they have on Netflix. And we walked around. We talked about hiking. We talked about him climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Can you believe that? No offense. That's his Netflix special. No offense. Uh, Theo's going to be at uh, San Diego at the uh, American Comedy Company at the end of... March the 24th through 26th, I think. And then he's going to be in um, Rooster Teeth Feathers in NorCal. Um, I don't know when that is. 
in April. In April at some point. Um, I am going to be in San Diego this weekend, Friday, Saturday, the 11th and 12th, or 10th and 11th, whatever that is. Um, and uh, Irvine, March 24th. Danish and O'Neill are coming to open for me. Um, and then Tempe, Arizona, the last weekend of April, of March, and the first day of April. It's like March 29th through 31st. It the Tempe Improv. Check my website, arithegreat.com, for tickets. Uh, and then we have like two more belly room shows, three more belly room shows. So check my website, arithegreat.com. It's um, not not this Tuesday, not tomorrow. The week after that is family. What what is this? What is happening? Um, oh, Roy Head, Roy Head, right there, right there. God, that guy's big. He's so fucking big. What is this? Can you guys hear how noisy this is? Um. Anyway. Come on. Should I pause it? All right. It ended. Um, and by the way, my storyteller show, this week it's on at 1, one o'clock. They had to preempt it for a, uh, an airing of Nikki Glazer's something to do with her new show. Why wouldn't they put it after my show? <laughs> anyway, so at, between at midnight and my show, now they're putting a Nikki Glazer special event. Why wouldn't they put it after my show? Whatever. Um... Yeah, just put it on at one. Anyway, my show's on at one this week. Kate Willett, one of the best stories of the year. Nick Swartzen and Kyle Kinane all on. The topic is romance. So set your DVRs for 1 a.m. Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning. I guess midnight if you're central time. Set your DVRs for just to tape this is not happening. Um, at any point. They say the ratings only count if you watch it within three days. But you know what doesn't count? Actual watchers. So if you guys want to watch it 10 days later, don't fucking not do that. Um, good stories coming up. Good stories. And I'm looking for females for next year. Females, black people. It's hard to find them. Um, all right. Should we start? Did you guys watch my story last week about the dog, about Benji's dog? What did you think? Was it good? And by the way, if you guys like these stories, make sure to tweet the people who, who are doing them. Here's how we're going to do it. And, by, and if you're in Canada, use BetterNet. BetterNet for Canada, Australia. It lets you watch on your phone or computer all the YouTube stuff that's geo-blocked. So Canada, Australia is BetterNet. It's on Twitter, at better not, I don't know, whatever. BetterNet. One word. Um, yeah, anyway, tweet at them. So let's do it. Let's do it. I've been hiking a lot lately. I mean, ever since I started going to Joshua Tree with the guys doing mushrooms. Come on. Yeah, we, oh, we don't know. We don't know by now. Not till the baggage unattended. I went up to a TSA lady and I was like, hey, I'm on crutches and it's fucking painful for me to stand up on this thing. Do, do you mind if I just go to the front? And she goes, well, you got to ask every single person in line. I'm like, well, I mean, that's not a realistic suggestion, right? And she's like, what does that mean? I'm like, look, I'm on these crutches. I've been taking a wheelchair through there. I've been trying not to take a wheelchair, but it's still too painful for me to be on crutches. Subtext, by the way, was you guys have never stopped a terrorist at all. So how about just don't put me in more pain since my leg is broken? That was a subtext. She goes, no. She goes, if you want to go back there and get a wheelchair and come back. I'm like, you want me to fucking crutch 10 minutes to go get a wheelchair so I can come back? There's nothing I can do, which is not true. Just something you could easily do. Just go, oh, this guy's hurt. Let's just get him to the front. Fucking garbage. Remember when that guy came and shot up a bunch of TSA agents at uh, LAX? Well, we're all still waiting for copycat crimes. So if you're out there thinking about it, now's your chance. No one will be against you. Um, just don't kill yourself at the end. Whatever happened to that guy? I wonder what happened to that guy. Anyway, guys, let's start the episode. I love going on hikes. I love going on hikes. This is a perfect way to do this one about hiking. Theo Vaughn, very, very funny comic. You guys, honestly, you should watch his special. He's like a legitimately funny comic. Um, no offense on Netflix right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shavir's Kevin Tank, episode 150, 256, 256. Take a hike with Theo Vaughn. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. This song is a place of a copyrighted song. 
um, yeah, we had these botanical gardens and we could like take bike paths and stuff through that. Is, is all wilderness going away? Like, are they getting rid of all that for everybody? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I remember those botanical gardens was Brookside, Brookside Gardens in Maryland. And then, um, ooh, I should bring a joint on this trip. Um, and we could take bike paths and stuff there behind Robert E. Lee High School and to get there. But now when I go back, all those trees are cut down. You know, it's just Brookside Gardens. I don't know if there's the paths are even there anymore. People, man, we're the scourge of the earth. Now, I don't know what scourge means. Hey, Slick, this is from Theo. Traffic here on the 101, but I'm in hot pursuit. It looks like I will be 10 minutes late. Okay, fine. So Theo's coming. Question, am I going to take my shirt off? Everybody knows the answer to that. Um, I love hiking, you guys. I got into it. I got way into it in the last few years. Well, I guess this is all stuff I'll do in the intro, right? So I'll just pause this, and then we'll... Theo Vaughn's calling. Hello. Hey, what's happening, Theo? What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just meet me here. Whatever. Yeah. All right. Bye. Well, Theo is going to be twenty minutes from now, and not ten minutes. Google Maps fucked him. It goes back to my theory. Ever since Steve Jobs died, nothing is right. Now I'm gonna look. I'm gonna make sure he used Google Maps and not just that fucking shitty Maps app. Oh no, that's what I mean by Steve Jobs died. The iPhone Maps app is so shitty. How did Google Maps take him from Westwood all the way up to Ventura? And then back down. That's got to be that iPhone map and not Google Map. No way, man. No fucking way. He's in Westwood. He's fucking 20 minutes away. Whatever. Um, I mean, I'll just get out and smoke a joint myself. Well, until he gets here, fuck it. I'll just sit in my car and we'll do some of this. When I first started getting into hikes, I guess was a. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I mean, I just sort of casually got into it. I mean, mushrooms helped for sure. Going with those guys to like Malibu Creek State Park, with all the comedy store door guys, and Joshua Tree. I mean, you could just hike for like hours. You could just walk out for hours. And maybe I took that shit for granted when I was little. I mean, I guess I almost definitely did. But maybe it's being in such a big city. I think that's what it is, too. Like, when I'm in New York, and they have those little parks, those little tiny, like, I mean, honestly, it's like, you know, 20 feet by 60 feet. Um, You just duck in there and maybe eat lunch or something. And they're wonderful. They're great. But it's not real in, like, nature. I mean, you can still see the building. Ow! ow fuck! Never ash into your hand. Fuck! This on fire. Am I gonna light this car on fire? No, oh, there's smoke coming from the bottom. God damn it! Why is there smoke coming from the car? Go out! The whole cherry fell off. Go out! It's in between the seats. Ugh! How do I move this seat back? More. Come on. Oh, this is trouble. I should probably stop this podcast. Oh, maybe it's out. It might be out. Mm, yeah, let's assume it's out. But those parks in New York, when you see them, it's like you really need them because there's so much non-wilderness. There's so many people and city coming at you that it's like you just need to breathe. So as I've lived in these cities longer, I think I value more the chance to get away from the city. You know, even if in short spurts. Like, Joe List loves Central Park. It really is. Like, just kind of nature. You get to walk on grass a little bit. I know it's not much, but it's like, when, when you're connected to so much not that, it's just fucking great. So these places in uh, in California, I mean, they got tons of hikes in Santa Monica and uh, up, uh, you know, on the in the hill in between, in between L.A. And, uh, and the valley. 
Uh, Runyon Canyon is like the basic one. Runyon Canyon is LA's Central Park, but then they have tons of other ones, like Griffith Park. Um, and there's just trails. There's trails and or big outside paths. Is that the, oh, it is not. Um, and they're amazing. And I started going on with like Matt Edgar and stuff. We'd find places with views of the whole city of LA. I mean, you can see from Runyon, Runyon Canyon, you can see all the way to the ocean. And that's like, I mean, to drive there would take, at 2 p.m. on a weekday, it would take an hour. And you can see it. You can see deep into the ocean. It's great on a clear day. On every other day, you can't see anything. You're just like, oh, just city goes on forever. There's a lot of smog in L.A. There's a lot. The best when you stand on the comedy store roof and you just see there's a ring around it. There's a fucking ring around downtown that you can see. Whew. Um, yeah, anyway, so I've always liked hiking. And I figure, why not do a podcast about it? I didn't really think that actually until I, I, I was, I was going to talk to Theo about, well, he has a Netflix special coming out. Uh, I guess it just came out. It just came out on Friday. So everybody check it out. Uh, Theo's a legitimately funny comic. He came from that, when he started in, in, in LA in stand up, he had been in the real world. So everyone assumed he was just a real world guy. He's also a good looking guy. So we assumed, uh, incorrectly that he was going to be one of those people that come from acting that come from Hollywood and say, I want to do comedy now. And okay, you guys haven't heard of them because they fail out, but there's tons of them. There's tons of them that just come. They're just kind of like, let me try this. And it's like, the, I mean, Cato Kalin did stand up for a little while. Cato fucking Kalin. He might still be doing it to be honest on occasion. Ron Jeremy would get up there, and it's like, ah, I get it, guys. I mean, those aren't the best examples of Hollywood stuff, but all those reality show people, they come around. So I assumed Theo would be that, too. But he's, like, really funny. I remember about six, seven years ago, there was just, like, going around when people were like, you, Nick Youssef and I were talking, like, have you seen Theo Vaughn lately on stage? And it's like, no. And it's like, he's good. Uh, and he just kept getting good. So anyway, his Netflix special is out. It's a solid comic. You're not going to go wrong. Plus, you don't have to buy it. So I'm telling you how to spend your hour uh, of your life. And you're going to enjoy it. I haven't seen it yet. Because um, when I'm recording this, it is not out yet. But it will be out two days ago when this is out. So um, check it out. I, I'm, without seeing it, I'm telling you it's going to be good. <sighs> um, so anyway. Oh, so Theo is like, hey, give me some suggestions. I'll get you on, but I can't just have you on. I have to explain to people what this podcast is sometimes. So like, can I do the podcast? I'm like, yeah, what's the topic? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, oh, you have never heard it. But I told Theo, I'm like, get some, get some subjects, which is okay. Most people haven't heard anybody's podcast. But I was like, get some subjects. And he's from, you know, the South. I was like, maybe that. He's seen a lot of fights. Maybe that. Just fights we've observed. Oh, we saw a good one in, in Denver. Me, Ren, and and Simone right outside the fucking game. I got to get them on to talk about that. But, um. But um, congratulations, Denver Broncos, by the way. Who picked that? No, I'm really, I'm wondering who. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's me. Um, so he's like, what about hiking? And I was like, fuck yeah, man. I'm totally into that. Why not? Let's do a podcast about it. So me and Matt Edgar take these hikes. There's one up by my old place on Sunset where you can walk up the streets and you take you to this outlook and you just go up there and smoke pot. Somebody brought a fucking bench up there. A bus bench, and that stayed up there for about a year. It was wonderful. You see fun stuff. You see half-eaten dogs. Oh, my God. You see a dog chewed up, which is a little bit of his face left. Like a little bit of it. Kind of like the amount in uh, Netflix's uh, to, catch a, to Catch a Murderer or Making a Murderer. Um, you know, the top part of that, that graphic? It's like that much was face, and the rest was all just bone with a collar around him. It was like, oh, this was somebody's pet. And the coyotes got to him. Man, I bet they're still putting up posters for their dog, or they were at the time. Lost dog, lost dog. Oh, no, it's rotted. It ain't like somebody had it. You can't lose a dog up here. You can lose a dog in New York City, you got a chance. You cannot lose a dog. Anywhere around Griffith Park, Los Feliz, nothing like that. Oh, maybe that's Theo. Pull in, pull in. I should get out of my car. That's what I'll do. 
That way he knows it's me. And by the way, if you ever do go hiking, never fucking litter. It's the worst. Is that him? Maybe it is. All right. Nope, not him. Some fat white guy. Man, it's nice out here. The sun is shining. God damn. Why was I doing my car? How am I going to do this? Put it in my pocket? Let's see if that'll work. All right, I'm going to pause this so you guys can get some sun. Fuck, I love it outdoors. It's the best. Oh, he's here. <laughs> Are you really skidding out? Oh, nice. <laughs> What's up, Theo? Nice skid. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Let me ask you a question. Do you use Google Maps or the iPhone Maps? I have a theory that iPhone Maps sucked. Yeah, that's what it is. The iPhone Maps. Since Steve Jobs died. Tolerates garbage. Well, I, and then I put it into Google Maps, and then that's where I was like, well, this is a whole different place now. Oh, yeah. So I'm really sorry, man. How are you? Don't worry about it. Value your time. I just, I just feel bad. It's your time. I got, I got free. Um, okay, how can I help out here? Okay, here, take a microphone. This is going to be fucking the long one. Yeah, the long one? I know, it's going to be ridiculous. It's great, though. Have you ever done these like no, on location? I fucking like love this. Oh, as soon as you, when you see your text, yeah. uh, we have we just can't go further than eight feet from each other. <laughs> I've thought about it twenty times. <laughs> I think it might be twelve. All right, here we go. I got two waters. Oh wow, man. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this knapsack. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Want me to carry that? No, I got this. How are you doing this? Here. Have you ever been here before? No, I never been here before, man. Oh, we're recording. By the way, Theo Vaughn, how are you? What day does Netflix special come out? I'm doing good. Special comes out on Netflix February 26th. All right, this will be 28th. Oh, nice, man. We should do it afterwards, right? Yeah. So it'll already be there. Yeah. I feel like there's no point in promoting a Netflix special beforehand. Before. Yeah. You can't pre order, you can't do shit. That's true. It's a good point, actually. Yeah. All right, I've been here like three times with Matt Edgar. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's nice, like different man. fucking paths. There's that way, that way. I've never really been, but they all just take you up and around and whatever. And then there's up there, too. Oh, I'm up for whatever. What's Matt? Like, I don't know him that good. Matt Edgar? Yeah. He's into this shit, too. Is he? Yeah. Let me make sure this is recording, but yeah, we're good. It is. Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. Uh, you don't really know Matt Edgar? No, I mean, I talk, he's always super friendly. I just don't know him very well. I need to make more of an effort. Oh, uh, yeah. It's hard. There's a lot of people at the comedy store. Yeah, there's a lot of people. You know, I just caught myself. Huh. There was a, there's a new cover booth girl, the blonde one. Oh, yeah. Seen her? Yeah. And so I like check in a few times, like, hey, I'm here. And then I like put my coat back there. Uh huh. And then I was like, man, I haven't even introduced myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've seen her like four times. I've been a complete dick. I know, bro. It is a little weird over there. It's like you just. Yeah, there's some people. The weirdest thing is, are there people at the comedy store where you shake their hand every time, but you have no clue who they are? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, for sure. There's guys that I'm like, you could, you could, if people could ask me, I'm like, easily an agent or a comedian. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Especially those ethnic ones. Like, if you're like Indian, you already oh. dress well. Yeah, you know. So that's, that's like true. You're halfway, halfway to halfway an agent. agent. Yeah, basically, being an agent is really just like dressing well and then not behaving well. Dude, my agent was at Bonnaroo. Uh huh. And um, he put on a t shirt for about 30 minutes and he was like, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> and he went right back to like button down. He's like, I'll just roll the sleeves. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's, yeah uh, they get into that. Um, but yeah, man, the store, like, you know, Dirty Glenn that's up there? Which one's Dirty Glenn? No. The dude with the, uh, he always got on like that same vest kind of. It's Dirty like a Glenn. sports vest. No, is he one of the homeless ones. <laughs> no, 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 no. And there's that one kid that everybody Wait, says is, is an agent named Dirty Glenn. No, 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 no. It's just a guy. Oh. I think he's a comedian. Fuck, I don't know. He could just be homeless. Um, <laughs> there's that too there. Yeah, like, you might just be a well-dressed homeless. <laughs> I know, yeah, 
<laughs> did you just find this shirt today? You have a chance. Dude, I saw a homeless guy wearing all Syracuse head to toe. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I'm like, I think he became homeless right after a game. I think that's when it snapped. <laughs> So what were you saying? Dirty Glenn, what? Yeah, they got Dirty Glenn. I don't know. I was just trying to think of people if you knew. They got that one kid that everybody says lives behind the Andaz, lives behind that hotel. Oh, yeah. Mini Dean? Uh, no. No. I don't, I don't know if I know him. I, this kid's name, I think, is Alan. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people. I don't know. Little, I think it might be Little Alan. Like, there's just so many people out there that are just <laughs> fucking misfits. It's a weird place. Yeah, it's like nobody gets chased away. <laughs> yeah, I was telling yeah. somebody about these two hookers recently. I uh-huh. was out there for a while. Uh huh. And uh, it, it was a girl, and she looked at me all like angry. Like I'm like, oh no no, I'm, I'm no judgment. I'm just saying these two hookers hung out for like right. eight months at the comedy store. Right. They came over time. We totally accepted them. I and, think I'm at a party with them one night. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Do you get scared in these things? Uh, no, I don't think he. I mean, I'm more scared that one of us would kill each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, I brought my gun. Well, the thing is, is sometimes you don't know if you're a killer until you kill someone. That's what I believe. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think you might be right. Yeah, it's not like I'm just, like, I drove here thinking, like, oh, I'm a killer, you know? Yeah. And then I'm just going to, ha- I think you. But, like, all those horror movies, they think, it's, oh, it's just a fun trip. To the yeah. Place. Yeah. And then it, something happens. And even as the killer, I don't think you always know. Like your first kill, you don't know until it happens, you know? Then you're like a killer. Then you're like, oh, I loved it? Yeah, and then you get into it. But like right now, like neither one of us has killed anyone. But like yeah, right. you, it has to, if you're going to be a killer, it's got to start somewhere. It's got to start somewhere. Probably you don't start planning it ahead of time. It probably, like you say, just like happens. And you're like, oh. Then you're in. Yeah. Kind of like a lot of people doing stand-up comedy or acting. Where they're yeah. just like, well, I was with my friend. They said you want to audition too. As, why is that everybody's story? <laughs> That's Kevin Christie's. Is it? Yeah, he was just he was just an illustrator. Man, he's, he's so going funny. To audition, he's like, okay, and he booked it. His Twitter is so funny. Yeah, all he does is write jokes. It's Great. crazy. Um, Wish I could do that. Yeah. Do you I feel th- like you're a joke writer or a storyteller? Man, I'm t- I'm like a terrible writer. So all I have to do <laughs> is get up on stage fucking fifty times a week. Right. And then maybe I can overcome that. That's funny. That's the same way that I feel. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, when I see people write jokes, like Jesnick or Dan Mintz or BJ Novak or whatever, you know, anywhere with jokes, I'm just like, how do you do that? Right. Would you sit at home? I know. That sounds like the worst. Like a better way to say something? Yeah, you're just like a word scientist. Yeah. Hinchcliffe? Oh, yeah. You get along with him? Doug, I think I get along with Tony. Tony's so hard to read. You know, I don't think... I don't think it matters what you think. I think it's just in Tony's. It's yeah. just like what he, the world that he lives in. Yeah, I um, get along with him. I just for, for a second, I was like, oh, I could see him having some bitter feud with you that I don't even know about. He's uh, the first, the most I ever hung out with him was just now in New York last week. Oh, you guys were there together. Yeah, and I'd never even really. I mean, I, you know, we see, but it was like you said, you just see him on this at the store. Yeah. And you just don't know, you know. Uh, but I mean, you just passing and you say, hey, and that's it. Yeah. I did kill Tony once. That was cool. Um, but, uh, I mean, he's so cut. I mean, if, I, I'm amazed how his brain goes to such cutting fucking remarks so quickly. Oh, yeah. He goes for a brutal. But oh. he writes joke jokes. Well, no. I mean, it's, and he's great, at, he's great at those remarks. I mean, I was just running him in. So, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what happened. Some weird, like, fan guy came up on the street. Yeah. And said something, and he, but he, he <laughs> oh, the guy took a picture, and Tony's like, oh, that'll get eleven likes, and uh, it was just so fucking cutting. Well, you want to be like, what are you, that guy from the Muppets? It's like those, you know, those two guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like sometimes it's like both those guys live in Tony. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, like Tony's their landlord. <laughs> that'll get eleven likes. Um, but he said it to that dude, and it was just like you could tell, like the dude might have been excited about posting it, uh-huh, but it he, wasn't. <laughs> but it probably all like it probably was true. The guy only had so many friends on Instagram, and it was only going to get a few likes. I'll post this. Yeah, that'll that, get eleven likes. Yeah, and it was just like, <laughs> and Tony just took it all the way there, like right out of the gate. I was like, wow, you could see this guy's soul drip out a little. Um, but to be able to, I mean, that's just so like. He's just so yeah, like he'll do that thing where he'll like rearrange your last name, 
you know, to make to make some other meeting. Like instead of like, I don't know, Theo Vaughn, it'll be like, I have no idea. I'm not that kind of guy. Right. But, you know. Yeah, his, I mean, his mind Theo is. Theo Long, and then if something, you did something or Long would have been good, <laughs> you know. And his mind is right there. It's like right on the pulse of whatever that is. I can you see know? him thinking sometimes, too. Where he like, his mind goes like, his eyes go like a little bit left. He's like, yeah, that's like, and I'm just like, oh, a joke's coming. Yeah. Joke's about to come. Yeah, and you see his grin starts before the joke does. Uh-huh. He's like, I'm about to do something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So where'd you grow up? I grew up down in Louisiana, man. So did you go out in the wilderness sometimes? They have it there? Yeah, well, we just had the woods. You know, like kids have the woods? Yeah, you go to the woods, right? Yeah, we had the woods. And, uh, yeah, it was it was good, man. We had... I don't know if... I was just thinking about it. I don't know if I appreciated it when I was little, where I could go to the woods. Because I go back to those places now, uh-huh. and a lot of them are just housing developments. Yeah. You know? <laughs> It's true, man. You couldn't like bike through this path in the woods to get to the the gardens or anything. It was just like it's all going away. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. That's one. That's the one tough thing about growing older is like it doesn't. The past doesn't stay there for you. Yeah. And then when you go back, like the nostalgia, it almost uh, it gets pretty tarnished. Yeah, and I love nostalgia, so that stuff is kind of heartbreaking sometimes when I go home. And does that happen when you're city? Little things have changed. Yeah, just little things. But like you said, it could be they put up some more apartments in the woods, you know. Yeah. And you spend all these moments back in those woods. Like we had these one woods bus where there was a river behind it, yeah. and then there was the interstate was behind there. On the other on the other side of the river was the interstate. Yeah. And um, between that other bank of the river and the interstate, a lot of gays would meet up behind there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, make out behind the rest area. Yeah. And so. <laughs> Straits never really had that area, did they? I guess. When I was young, out. we used to go watch. We used to go there. To so watch the gays? Well, we'd sit on the river. So it was a wide river. Yeah. And we thought, for some reason in our head, like we were kids, that it was another state over there. It was another <laughs> place where people could do that and they could be over there. That was legal. That wasn't Louisiana. Well, yeah, I guess in our minds it just... Over there in Mississippi. What state? Yeah, it was far. Is that Mississippi? Is like, is that Alabama? Even though it was... Yeah. And then we went down there one time and it had these guys down there shooting potato. had a big potato gun set up. And they were firing off tots at these fellas over there. At the gays? Yeah. Oh. Only if they were hugging, though. Not if they were... It was kind of like if they touched, then they would shoot one at them. So they could hang out. (laughs) And we didn't know. Like, we were like, what are y'all doing? And they're like, we're about to take a break, you know? (laughs) And uh, they're like, you guys want to have a try at it? And we're like, yeah, man. And they just showed us. And then we fired off this... Potato can in it. What is that? It shoots a potato? Yeah. At Just like a piece of making out? I mean, and Can you I, imagine doing that on Santa Monica Boulevard? Oh, well, like, now I feel bad about it, man. I just. But at the time, man, they were into it. I don't even think the gays minded. You know? I mean, it's got to be fun trying to do like a forbidden love while people's firing tots at you. <laughs> Could you hit them? Or oh, you, like, I doubt we him hit him. That accuracy? But the scare of the sound of it going off and then knowing something was coming, sometimes that's enough, you know? Dude, we had a rocket launcher. I went, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. There you go. <laughs> for water balloons. <laughs> Caparilla, me, and Renaissance. <Rennes-Zizzi. laughs> and it was one of those where you hold, you have two guys holding it up, <laughs> and then one guy pulling it all the way back, uh-huh. you know? Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Band. Yeah. And yeah, you stick water balloons in there, and we would hit him. We would throw him from the La Jolla condo. From inside. Uh Uh-huh. And we get, like, halfway down on the beach. And so this, like, sand would just blow up next to people. You know, as water would pop. And they would just look around them. And they'd be like, where was that coming from? And they're like, we're (laughs) way away. Oh, no, I've been on that balcony there, dude. That's a great location to do that from. Yeah. I need to do that when I go down there. Yeah, I got to get another one of those. So do you grow up around, like, a lot of these comic guys? Because you seem, like, pretty, I mean. Yeah, I started comedy here. Okay. So in LA, pretty much at the comedy store within a few weeks. Um, like anyone who came through there, I'm sort of like, I've just known for like a long time. You remember Harry Basil when he used to work there or no? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, he had come back a little bit. You know him? I just know him through like bookings and uh, 
and I've worked with him before. Oh. And since he opened up for Dangerfield, you know, I know. The movie guy. Like about some of the lore and everything. The lore of Harry Basil? Well, just like, but I remember last time I talked to him, which was just about two weeks ago, he said he used to work at the comedy store. And so I just, I never knew that, and so it made me think of that. Oh, yeah. It's kind of crazy how many people have been through there. Right. When you look at, like, all the greats, it was like, yeah, yeah, they were there, like, every day. Yeah, it's crazy. Do you feel like it's getting back to that level a little bit? What do you feel like's going on? I mean, it's definitely more corporate than it was. When yeah. When did you get there? I got there about four years ago. Tommy came out no, of the porch. four years ago, that's it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Were you around L.A. before that? Yeah, I was around L.A. I just couldn't... The improv would give me some spots. So how long have you been in L.A.? About 11 years. Oh, okay. And but you started I, here? I started over in... I guess I started in New Orleans. Okay. Like, Sean Patton was there, Mark Norman. Where the hell does this path go? Right up to the... Oh, this is the interstate, I think. Get your potato gun, huh? Damn. Uh, oh, there's a better path. Want to try this? Yeah, sure. But through there? Yeah, right. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of snakes are going to be does. It here. sure does. It's, like, it's not a path at all. Dude, they had this kid when I was growing up who, uh, tough kid, loves snakes, right? Yeah. But he had a list, so he just like, we only, he's like, we're about to get these snakes, boys. These snakes? Snake, yeah. Oh, and we go out there looking for him. But you couldn't make fun of him because he was so tough, he'd beat your ass, you know? <laughs> With a lisp? Yeah. Why does lisp make it sound like there's no way you could beat my ass? <laughs> I know. you have a fucking lisp. Man, this is pretty unique, dude. Oh, yeah. There's other paths, I guess, that don't go straight up here. We just kind of pick them and go, and then, like, looks at... Look. See, look at this, though. This is cool shit you don't really get, at least where I was from, and definitely not in New York, where we're just in the fucking middle of the woods. We're yeah. in the mountains. And where people's yacht, like, it's like you can see, like, people, like, his condos and stuff in the distance. Like, yeah, it's oh, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that part's weird. This is somebody's home right here. We can just walk right up into their in the yard. Oh, there's a path. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is beautiful out here. I mean, I, it, the saddest part is I didn't realize how close this was. To you. To me. Oh, yeah. We just found it. Me and Edgar just found this one because we go up to Runyon Canyon a lot. Mm -hmm. What's that like? It's like, oh, fuck. I, I always hear about it. It's it just like, seems like it's like hot chicks and, like, Dane Cook. Tons of hot chicks. Tons of hot chicks. Tons of Dane Cook. You see Dane Cook's photo for the Super Bowl? Oh, my God. Yeah, I was there. Oh, yeah. I was there when we all real? found it. That's... So, who said you think it's been Photoshopped? That was I pretty did. funny. That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I mean, but, well, that guy has so much lore around him. I think he's losing it. Yeah, that's what a lot I of people are worried about. in the middle of losing it. People think that he's losing it. What? Oh, I hope that's a panther, dude. Oh, oh, that's, that's deer. deer. It's a bunch of deer. Oh, that's deers, dude. That's deers, man. A couple of does right there. Let's go kill one and fry it up. I assume you can do that. Being from uh, Louisiana, right? Dude, I accidentally killed one with a lawnmower when I was young. What? Oh, still was the he... worst moment of my life. I was pushing a lawnmower through high grass, like, I mean, seven feet tall. And there was a deer sleeping. What? Yeah. It just didn't wake up? Yeah, I think it was a baby and its mom had jumped off. Oh, you... oh, fuck. I still feel buck just horrible about that. Good God. Where did you get it? I didn't get it anywhere. You ran over it? Yeah. I mean, where? where? I mean, it... On the head? The body? Dude. It was going... I mean, Jesus. There ain't much of it. It's a baby. Oh. Tell me about it, bro. Oh. Dude. I mean... Fuck. At point-blank range, dude. You ran over it with a lawnmower. I mean, I ran onto it. God, yeah, you don't really, you don't really survive lawnmower running overs. Ugh, train still... you could survive if it went right over you. Apparently, right. <clears throat> well, do you ever have like those crazy like fantasies, like when you're in New York at the tracks, where you're like somebody pushes you and you like survive? For sure, I have those fantasies all the time. Of, like, and if they do come, I also have the ones where I fight back fantasies, where I take them and I throw them. Oh yeah, and use their weight against them. Yeah. Um, but what would really happen is somebody would just push you and you'd die, probably. Yeah, uh-huh. Right, because the train would be coming, and I'd be like, I wouldn't be expecting it. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't have the wherewithal to land cleanly and then roll under the side thing. Dude, how do you think you'll die? Let's get it on tape. Um, well, uh, for a lot of it, I think it's uh, falling down to some sort of, like, one of those grates. Oh, we can't go this way. One of those grates? You know those, like... I think we go up this hill. Up this hill and around? You think? Yeah, they the deers. They're all up there. They got two deers. You guys can't see them because it's just audio, but <laughs> they got two deers, man, about 60 yards away. 
they can get through this shit. Yeah. We can't get through that. No, they're agile, man. They uh Dudes don't give a fuck. You know, some of this point. Some of their skin is just as tough as um like a strong lizard. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. Can we get up this way? Huh? Fuck. All right. When did you start hiking and shit? Well, actually, last year. You just started last year? Yeah. With that? No, 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 no. I didn't start with that. Uh, last year, I started hiking. A friend of mine got me in a hike and I went out to Eagle Rock. You been there? No. Eagle oh, Rock, that's like, Eagle awesome. Rock's like in Los Feliz type place? Uh, no, this place is just called Eagle Rock. It's just on the top of this mountain, I guess. Okay. Awesome hike, dude. Five. You got five hours to kill. Yeah. And you're ready to burn. You know, you'll burn a little bit of body oil, but it's dope, dude. You get to the top. There's like, there was a special needs guy up there. Everybody's fired up. Really? Yeah, it was good. How did he get up there? Ah, who knows, man. God, probs. <laughs> what? You God know? God lifted him and put him up there? I mean, I don't know what happened, dude. He's up there and everybody's celebrating about it. The hell? If we go right up that thing, we can get up to that road right there. Yeah, we can get to that road and figure out from there. That's not a bad idea. Wait, um, how far away is Eagle Rock? Eagle Rock's probably, I would say it's an hour and 20, an hour and an hour east an on hour the 134. East. Okay. So, but then, yeah, I got into that. And then January of last year. Yeah. Uh, or actually, so I got into hiking a year and a half ago and then went to Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Eight months later, after starting hiking, I went over to Mount Kilimanjaro and did that hike. How? Where's Mount Kilimanjaro? Seattle? Tanzania. Where's that? Tanzania, Africa. Oh. Motherland, brother. Dave Chappelle country. <laughs> That's what they're known for. Oh, yeah. Oh, they got pictures of them over there on shirts and everything. Do they really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. A lot of Chappelle fans over there in Africa, dude. You think it's because he like built up a, ba- a fan base while he was there? Well, he said he was coming and everything, Sorry. yeah. People were... And they get the news late there. <laughs> Way late. <laughs> What I loved, I don't know if they had this in there in Africa, but like in China, they have shirts that are just so clearly it could be the up. Super Bowl losing team as a champion or anything <laughs> yeah. else. Like this one said, New York Knicks, NBA champs, 1997. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> we're making the playoffs those years. <laughs> It was just somebody way hedging their bets early on some shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So wait, so you just went, you're like, fuck this, I love it. I'm going to try to do something massive. Yeah. Fuck, this is steep. This is steep, man. You got it? Yeah. Jesus. <sighs> These Ari podcasts are intense, bro. <laughs> My Christ. I mean, this is... I'm on all threes here because I'm holding this mic, but. Yeah, mic. Oh. I think came here once with a. What's up, man? <sighs> Jesus, that guy probably thinks we're some kind of. Gay couple. Gay couple, like, yeah. I should have brought the potato gun. I know, dude. <laughs> These guys are good. This is here. what you see. I mean, this is it, actually. This is good. Yeah, it's actually full circle now that you and I have come out of the woods <sighs> together. <laughs> Whew. Uh, yeah, so I just went to Tanzania, and they call it Tanzania. Tanzania? And we call it Tanzania. Who does? The people in Africa. We call it Tanzania? Yeah. And that blew my mind, man, because I got an argument right out of the gate. With one of them? Yeah. This guy at the airport, man. And they got, uh, say this, beautiful women there, though. Lean, cut, tall. Wait, where's Tanzania? Is it an island? No, it's like in, it's like a little bit north of South Africa. Yeah. But yeah, lean women down there. The dental work is where you really have to probably put in some money. Hold on, hold on a second. If you're going to get a woman. Named uh, Rudy, actually, which is a man's name, but, you know. Wait, like, who? How'd you get there? Flew understand. there. Flew to Tanzania. On your own? I flew to Tanzania on my own. Was this with like a shoot or anything? No, to meet up with two buddies who uh, had also agreed to go hiking on Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. Yeah. From what? High school? Uh, fantasy football league. Wow. Two guys from a fantasy football league. You just start talking about it and you're like, fuck it. Was that the guy who took it to Eagle Rock? Uh, no, a different girl had taken me to Eagle Rock and she invited me to go. To Kilimanjaro? Yeah. 
this exec over at TBS actually, but I just was worried if there would be any romance or not. And I don't think you want to get stuck on an eight day hike, you know, dealing with romance and people sharing a tent and people's, you know, certain times. Yeah. This wasn't like for me, that was my time of the month really. You know, I feel like as a man, you know, you don't want to be out there dealing with that. That girl, Kimberly Congdon, whatever her name is. Oh yeah. With the tits on her shirt. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh, that's Sarah Weinshank. Are they a team together? They both did that? I don't know. Ooh. Maybe it's Sarah's shirt. A lot of tits. Oh, maybe she borrowed the shirt from Sarah and put her tits on it, but I know she tried to sell me one on the internet. Oh. Yeah, anyway, she was like, how come all the boys at the comedy store go take their mushroom trips in the woods and don't invite girls? And it's like, well, one, first of all, we do, if you're cool, but we don't want fucking some girl that three of us want to bone. Yeah. Or we're out taking mushrooms and all looking at each other. Yeah, dude. That's a, I mean, yeah. Well, sometimes girls just want to do... It's like... Y'all do your own mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> We're not holding it's anyone e- back. Yeah, it's equality, man. These cows will shit anywhere for anyone. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Get out there. You picked them, huh? When you were in, when you were little or no? Oh, dude, I remember going to this party the first time I ever even heard about them. Some dude's like, <clears throat> uh, you ever, some dude, you know, fucking snake oil salesman passing through. He's like, you ever yeah. been to the future? And obviously I know the answer to that one is no. <laughs> And he's like, well, you ever been to the past? And I was like, yeah, I've been to the past, man, in my mind, you know? Yeah. And he's like, well, you ever been to the future and the past? And I was like, nah. And he's like, let me, let's go out to this place and let's get you some shrooms. So we went out there, literally picked half a garbage bag of mushrooms, right? Whoa. And this dog came, at one point, this dog gets into this field. I mean, we're on probably about 30 acres, so it's wide open. This dog, and he's just roaring across this field, and we're out in the middle of the field. At he you, comes coming at you? Yeah. Oh, and I mean, so I'm running, bro, as fast as I can. Finally, right when I get to the gate, he catches me, and he's a nice dog. Oh. Fucking <laughs> furious, bro. <laughs> so then I went out. And he's anyway. Jumping, he's just running around. Yeah, he's just being sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I'm like, uh-huh. Jesus, dude, let us know. <laughs> he's like, we're running, I guess. Yeah. And his new friend are running. Yeah. So that was pretty wild. But anyway, I took a bag to this party, right? I'd never even yeah. ate a bunch. I locked myself into the uh into the what you know, into the bathroom and uh literally watched my dick drip off into the toilet. How long did it take to hit in? Oh, I don't know. But I come out of the party, yeah. everybody been eating them, everybody's gone. Everybody left? Le- but literally like left like out into the woods, oh. out by the pool. People were in the pool, it's not even a pool party. <laughs> uh I like, get it fucking <laughs> I think some people left that party and never came back to town. Like, it was a solid... I mean, and there must have been... The bag must have weighed probably 12 pounds. I mean, we had a lot of... Everyone just got into them. Oh, people just ate them, yeah. Because you'd always heard, but, you know, we're at about that age, about 14 or 15. Yeah. Then, uh... I'm going to take my shirt off. We're going to get this level. Yeah, here we go. This is a little hitching post right here. Guns out. Get that vitamin D, man. So, but yeah, I mean, girls can do them. I mean, have you done them with girls? You have. Let me think. Yeah, no. Yeah, Marino's ex-girlfriend used to come with us all the time. Uh, but she was already part of the, the group, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did them with Chris, Big J's girlfriend. and. Uh, oh, yeah, I just met Big J. Um, yeah, I've done them with girls before, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And do you feel like it incites you to want a bone? Because I haven't done it in a uh, long time. Uh-uh. Yeah. But you know what? I don't know if I've done them with somebody that I would want a bone. Right. I did hear my friend Pete said that he had a, a bad trip when he was with somebody. It's a guy he barely knew, like mm-hmm. knew a little bit. Ooh. And then a girl that he liked. Right. But not, hadn't done anything. Oh. And he was like, it's just a bad trip. He just started having negative thoughts and trying to control himself. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, I'd want to do it with a girl like Frank Castillo. Yeah, he does. He loves him. Yeah, he just did it with his girlfriend, but they've been together like five, six years. Right. So they're just like oh, Hannah. All, I think her name is pals. Let's just do this mushrooms together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That guy's got a great energy too. I mean, I could imagine. Right. He, he and his girl seem pretty locked in. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah. Wait, so who? So they take you up to Mount Kilimanjaro. Yeah, we go up to Mount Kilimanjaro, and it's. Uh, I mean, I think it's twenty-one thousand feet. Yeah. And so you start at the bottom, and you get how high up are you at the bottom? Uh, at the bottom, I guess you're probably at about... You're in at zero feet. No, I think you're probably at about maybe 5,000 feet. Maybe 4,800. 
4,800 feet. Okay. So when you can start at different distances, you can get bust in or whatever to different spots where, based along how, how long you want your trip to be. So oh, we okay. set up on a trip in advance True. through this crew group online. I don't even remember what they were called, but there's a couple of them. And it's not crazy expensive. I mean, you can make the whole trip happen yeah. with your flight and everything for about 3500 bucks. 3500 And I bet you could even do it for less. I bet you could do it for 2500 How many days were you there for? Uh, I was there total for, I guess, about eight or nine nights, nine nights. That's, that's a pretty good price for a vacation for that, for that much. Yeah. See another part of the world. And you, I mean, you get the experience. I mean, you have these porters that come with you. So all of a sudden you have a lot of people that help carry a lot of the stuff. Oh, really? One of them is a chef and a lead chef. It's basically a guy who's, you know, who can work a butane torch on a mountain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and they're all smoking weed and selling you weed and drugs. Like, oh, I mean, you could easily, two days into it, disappear off into the woods on some freaking mountain dope <laughs> really? and never yeah i mean mountain dope. like you don't you want to bring everything you need with you on the trip you don't want to bring 15 extra u.s dollars uh <laughs> because you will buy i mean oh right like the first big rocky it's almost like you won't have seen anybody in two days you'll pass a rock and there's a drug dealer behind it and you're like how does this guy <laughs> hello ladies how are you? how's this guy even out here you know yeah <laughs> um <laughs> so, uh, and then you get to like a camp each day, you set up a camp and the scenery is just beautiful. I mean, there's a day where literally it feels like you're on Mars. Like you are, you're just, it just looks like something you've never seen. Like these winds are going by and it's these rock formations, this like these size of these rocks that are just sitting completely by themselves, individual rocks. It makes no sense. Um, and then the next day you'll be in like this tropical elevation cause you're going through different levels. Really? And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some days where you're just like, damn, I don't, your mind almost can't take it all in. Do you get to the point where you can't see anything else other than, you know, not people? Um, no, cause there's other people on the trail, but you'll definitely have some hours where you don't see anyone else. There's other groups that are out there hiking. Yeah. Uh, and then you do a base camp each day. The whole, um, the whole group just sets up. Yeah, in our group, we just had three guys. We had 10 or 11 porters with us. Wow, really? So they, yeah, because they got to bring well, that's all... That's worth 3500 then. All the so tents. they carry all the shit? What do you carry? Your stick? You carry your back. Oh, okay. You can, actually, they'll even carry your back for you. And it, it wasn't like a, an exclusive group. Like, we went I've with... Done that. How do we get there? Oh, yeah, let's do that, huh? Yeah. Um, it wasn't super exclusive. Yeah. You know, we went with one of the cheaper inversions. Uh but yeah, man, it's wild. I mean, you're there. It's, you know, it's, and the whole time you have this beautiful mountain, like in the distance. Yeah. What do you think there are? Maybe. It seems like it's been tread on, right? Maybe there so. and around or maybe further. Maybe further. Okay. Uh, so you get over there and it's just, yeah, I mean, you're out on the trail and then like the problem is you, they have a food tent, a little kitchen tent they put up Yeah. and the man makes the food, the chef. Like what and, do you eat, uh, burgers and shit? No, 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 you eat... Nothing perishable like that. Yes, that's the start of the problem, right. nothing perishable. So I'm in there complaining, <laughs> you know, give me some perishables, you know, because I was yeah. raised on perishables. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and this dude, he's just making like cucumber soup. That's the big thing. It's cu- cucumber soup. And they wait till everybody gets to the table before they take the pot, top off the pot. <laughs> have no idea but it's together. cucumber soup every time. <laughs> it's almost like a shell game. Like you think it's going to be. Uh, he's, he's not showing us. It must be something different yeah, this yeah. time. And then like literally something will hatch an egg along the way. And they will like. Like they're killing animals in the distance. Oh, really? Trying to find dinner. Yeah. Yeah, we can do this. All right, let's do it. So. Yeah. So like, you know, one day you come and there'll be like two eggs. Yeah. You know, and you'd hear like a bird like crying in the distance, like a mother. No way, really? I mean, it's, you're like, ah. So you eat them, but you definitely taste more than the egg. You know, you taste kind of the family history. <laughs> That's uh, as organic as it comes, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at a certain point, farm to table needs to freaking put a little distance between you and the farm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so we hit a little pasture down here. Oh, wow. It's like open. Oh, that was a- uh, and then, so then in the morning you get up and you roll out and you just cruise. You do about five or six hours of hiking. Five or six hours. Up, yeah. up, up. 
sometimes it's different. Sometimes you got to elevate for one day, and then the next day you'll come back like halfway down. To go around something? Yeah, to go around something, and also to acclimate yourself, because you can't shock your body by going all the way to the top. Whoa. Um, because... The elevation will be too great? Too the right elevation away. will be too great, yeah, like too much oxygen in the blood, and you can get G'd out. Oh, that's People ridiculous. sometimes kill their wives up there. No way, really? Yeah. Because it's like a cruise. Crazy? For some reason, it's the same kind of thing as a cruise, but just because the elevation. Yeah. Um, yeah, people kill their wives up there. Whoa. And uh, They're a little nuts, and they're like, F- she crossed me, you're not thinking straight? Yeah, I mean, you're up there, and maybe like feelings you trying to hide or boil out to the top. Yeah. Let's just not talk about this now. Yeah, yeah, out of the blue. Well, then when? When are we going to talk about it? Your wife's just trying to take a picture of you. <laughs> and uh, and you trip. Let's go up this other path. So we went around, I guess. Yeah, it's good though, man. It's good to get out here in the sunlight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks again for uh, for having me on. Yeah. Um, listen, boy. Did you get any of those feelings? No, I was with two of my buddies. I actually got some feelings of elation because the last night. Oh. So on night number seven, you get to the base camp, and at that point, you have the next morning. You have about a five thousand foot hike. That's just Really, really, it's pretty sheer. You don't need hiking equipment, yeah. but you need somebody there with you, uh, you mean, like to hold on to at moments, or you know, somebody oh, to really? be, yeah, be behind you. Like you just, you need that support, and you need that support because the, the altitude is getting thin. Uh, you're getting headaches, and it's pitch black. Yeah. Take this. Yeah. Like you go up at a point, uh, so they wake you up at one a.m. and you take the mountain. One a.m. Yeah. yeah. It's, what do you mean take the mountain? Like you get out there on it and you... Every day. Because you can't summit in the sunlight because... Why? Oh, because the clouds will come in. Yeah. And you won't be able to see very well. In the sunlight? Yeah. So because, the clouds don't come in at night? Yeah, the clouds don't come in at night. Right around there around daybreak, there's usually not any clouds. Oh. So, and it's just safer conditions because you're up so high. You're bit, literally, at some point you're passing through clouds. Like you're hiking right through a cloud. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. Then you hit the top, bro. And I mean, one of we, you'll see people turning around in that morning. Like you'll be at 4 a.m. and some dude is just wandering. Like the oxygen got to him. And he's quitting. Oh, he's quitting. Don't even speak the language you speak. You're trying to like some tell Italian. him, inspire him. Yeah, and he's like, duh, 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 duh. and you're just trying to inspire him and turn him around. And it's like it's very guttural at moments like that, where you're because you know the guy probably doesn't want to quit. He just needs somebody with him. And sometimes people are by themselves. They try it by themselves. Oh. Uh, so at least I had my two buddies, and we had two guides with us. At that point, you just have two guides, um, and you're just going. I mean, it's just dark. It's snow. It's icy. Yeah. It's magma. I mean, it's you're icy. All, yeah, and you're on the edge of a volcano, so it's magma, and it's pretty. It's gnarly. I mean, the temperatures are, you know, below zero. I mean, it's. You're getting it. Damn. Then the sun when breaks. What time of year is this? This was January. I don't know what it is for them. Oh. Oh, that's but right, Southern Hemisphere. Then the sun breaks, and it's about 5.40 in the morning. Yeah. And you can't feel your legs or toes. I mean, you are just beat. And you hit the top. And there's the sign. And there's people with, like, flags from, like, all over the world. The top top? Yeah, then you're at the top. You mean the 11,000 or 16,000? 21, yeah, 21. You're at 21, 21 now. Yeah, you hit the first top. There's actually two tops. There's another, like, isthmus you can go out on, which even has a little bit of a higher peak. Yeah. But you're above the clouds. Everything's wow. clear. And it literally looks like you're in heaven, man. Like it literally looked. It's the only time I ever felt like I was tripping or on some like adventure that was outside of me yeah. when I wasn't under the influence. The only, like, it was just surreal. I mean, and the oxygen's light, so you feel euphoric as well. Yeah. There's people in different languages hugging each other. It's almost like as if like, really? you really pictured like heaven would be or something, you know? Because you're just so proud that everybody's made it. Wow, because you did it. You did it. Because you did it, yeah. This and you know what? Thing. You know what people have been, you know, been through. Like, damn. You know that. How many times did you want to quit? I probably, I probably wanted to quit only one time. One of our buddies had quit in the morning, oh. and we had to sit with him on the side of the mountain halfway up and like literally to just talk him back up the mountain like dude give us two minutes walking up then you can go back yeah and he's like all right fine fine two minutes he was done and then we're like give us four minutes man do it for 
you know, your dad that passed away or something, you know, like really put the <laughs> pressure on him. Yeah. And he, and he did it because he had turned around 100%. Really? Uh, yeah, and it would have been miserable if he had gone all the way there and not done it. Yeah. And then you guys would have been talking about it later? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I like my part too. The 8,000 feet and below was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Then they always have to tell like the tertiary, the, like the... Some other story to try to blend in, and you're like, shut up, man. You this- didn't do it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> For talking to a bunch of people who did it, <laughs> why are you butting it? And then a story like that, over time, that guy even disappears from the story, you know? Right. Like 20 years later. Part. Yeah, you just almost want to take him out of the story so that... He was there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Hell yeah he it. was. So that's the craziest part, man, is just being on the top wow. and seeing like... Ta- yeah. Because the clouds are below you. I really want to see that shit. That view of the clouds below you or in the clouds. Yeah, really and so it looks like you're that. on a mountain that's come out of the cloud. Like, it's almost... It doesn't visually make any sense. So, and there's glaciers, and you're like, where the fuck did glaciers come from? <laughs> so... There's a reservoir over there. I'd recommend it, man. I think you could even do, like, almost like a... I mean, I hate to say like a mushroom tour because I know that, but I know you like to kind of branch out and open your mind and like, yeah. you know, really <clears throat> challenge to put yourself on different mental playing fields. If you had a group that went and did that, that'd be pretty gnarly. Wow. Yeah. What drugs are they selling? Oh, they were selling some type of, looked like a peyote, which I'd never done. I didn't want to go there then. Right then when you got to do all this hiking. Yeah. And strangers. there's a bunch of brothers around. Like I'm not used to like, you know. Black people? I can still deal with the black people, like, you know, from the south and, like, Englewood and shit, but I don't want to deal with, all of a sudden, a whole new strand of black people in the middle of nowhere, you know, like, yeah. or I don't want to be, like, behaving some way that's inappropriate to, like, African people or Yeah, where you're like, anybody. why'd you raise your left hand? Yeah. You're trying to you take my honor? And yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, totally. No. That's a tribal challenge, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. In my tribe, it just means my, I wanted to raise one of my hands and it was left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just asking a question. <laughs> yeah. This is a sign of respect. Imagine if that's why some tribes never advance, because every time somebody tries to ask a question. Hey, uh, kill them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only problem. Like, we want to reach out to people, but everyone comes real antagonistic. <laughs> um, so anyway, hate to babble, but that was no, it's okay. part of the that's journey, good. man. Wow. So they had peyote? They had mushrooms? They had peyote. I didn't see any mushrooms. I saw a lot of mushrooms out there, but I don't think that they were... I wouldn't want to do peyote unless I was like, okay, guys, next couple days we're not going to be hiking. Right. We're just going to be right here. And uh, and then when it's time, when we're all fully ready, we can move on to the next day. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think they had anything psilocybic out there because at a certain point there's no animals anymore. You just see some lizards. Really? Oh, is that mash? No, the mash is the Malibu Creek State Park. Oh, have you been there? We did go there. Is that awesome? Big mushroom chip, but we couldn't find mash. No. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah, Edgar found it later. It was me, Mervis, Edgar, Damadonia, uh, who else? A few people. Willie. But we were like, Edgar like came back like a month later. It was like, yeah, you guys, it was like 10 minutes away from us. There right. Were signs everywhere. I don't know why we couldn't find Damn. it. And is it, uh, yeah, like I got some mushroom chocolates. I might finally try some this weekend. Have you never done mushrooms? I've done them, yeah. It's oh, just been okay. a long time. I mean, there's times when I was younger. Oh, yeah. Now that you're an adult. But do you feel thing. like it kind of resets your brain a little? Yeah, a little. Yeah. Because that's what I need, man. I'm just fucking strung out on just... Why? What? Life. Oh, yeah. No, it completely resets your brain. My friend said it once. Lizard. Oh, yeah. They blend in so much. Oh, yeah. Wow. I like how they jump. That thing's agile. Yeah, yeah, you don't think of them as jumpers. Yeah. But my friend said, uh, it's what, when you're on mushrooms, but it kind of carries through to the rest of it. It's like there's stuff that matters on mushrooms and mm-hmm. there's stuff that doesn't matter when you're on mushrooms. Mm. So like you lose 20 bucks, it can ruin your day, but when you're on mushrooms, like, oh, well, whatever, somebody will find it. Right. You know, you just move on with your day, you know? Yeah, that's good. I need to get more of that in my life. Yeah, and then you start going like, oh, hold on. Yeah, this thing is shitty and that thing is shitty, but I'm taking a hike on a fucking Wednesday, you know? Things are chill. Doing publicity or whatever. Right. <laughs> I'm like, this is not bad. Having fun. Yeah. It really does help you reset and all that shit. And free focus, too. I was like, what do I want to accomplish and then get it done? I don't know. Yeah, do you, you ever try and write jokes and stuff on it? I'll take my notebook with me. Right. And so I'll write, like, uh, I'll thoughts. Write like uh, thoughts down. Yeah, but I got a bunch of, like, bits from my last special off a big really? mushroom trip near that MASH site. Well, I think, I mean, it's some, I know I've heard you tell some stuff about, I mean, but I, general, 
yeah. general trips. But not even about the trip as much as about like the thoughts I had while right. I was on them. The thoughts about like there was something that didn't make it where it was like they were trying to look at the constellations with the iPhone thing. Mm -hmm. And I just started thinking about how like iPhones have become our slaves. And if they don't do it right away, we're like, fuck you. Come on. What's wrong with this thing? And I'm like, they're going to rise up and take over. You guys. We treat them like assholes. Of course. Like, that's a reason they're going to rise up. That's hilarious. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with mushrooms. It was just the inspiration. You know? Right. It wasn't like when I do the bit, I had to be like, and these are mushroom thoughts. Right. Okay, let's go up there. Um, yeah, yeah, you should totally do them. I'm kind of actually like jealous of you right now. Yeah, man. You're in for like a, a really good one. I feel like I yeah, I just need to get some of that release, you know. Yeah. This town just gets stressful, man. I know you do bi coastal. Like, how do you feel about that? Because I've been considering that. Like when I was just there, you liked and it? Tony was there. Like, yeah, it just oh, wait, seemed. Let's go this, go this ravine, and then we'll come around. Go. Like yeah. more relaxed. I mean, not even to use Tony as an example, but it was like you know I'd seen him a hundred times at the store, and mm -hmm. it had always been just us in our same circles. Like you know, we kind of yeah. say what's up and some brief chatter, but out there it just seemed like we just chat. You know, we ended up chatting a bunch and like. It's just like you see, it feels like you get to know people better there. Where? In New York? In New York. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm Do you? To, yeah, I think you're right. I, I got to know guys like Mark Norman and Dan Soder, and it's like sometimes it's because you're at a club and you do like a couple sets at the same place. So there's really nowhere to go between your 8.30 spot and your 10.30 spot. You're like, right. I'll just hang out here. So you hang out with the same people, you know? But also it's because no one goes home and goes to sleep. It's an up all night city. Is it? So, like, if you get done with your spot at 10, 30, 11, it's not like, all right, I got to see you guys tomorrow. It's like, yeah, what are we going to do for the next six hours? Right. Let's go out. Right. We met some girls. Fucking just 23 bars within two blocks of here. Yeah. Let's get a drink. We'll talk. If they turn out to be losers, we'll just fucking leave. Right. You know? It's just like you just enjoy yourself. You walk around. You get a slice of pizza. And I don't know. It just, it just leads to more of those nights where you're like. There's what's, mystery. What's, what is this? What is this? Sacrifice? Ooh, ooh I don't know. I want to see a sacrifice in the woods, like some sort of weird, like, you know, first season of True Detective kind of stuff. Oh, dude, somebody definitely did something here. It looks like a sweat lodge, huh? Yeah, yeah, it does look like a sweat lodge. Wow. You're right. Was that a fire right there? No, maybe not. I don't know. It does look man. like a sweat lodge. Damn, they went to a lot of trouble to get this thing. A lot of sweat, dude. How did they make this? Uh, I don't know. Let's get one in this. With, let's scoot over a little bit. Let's get that lodge in there. It'd be fun to pose with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, like, what the fuck is it. this? Hey, you got a picture of Killer Majora from on top, from above the clouds? Yeah, yeah, I'll oh, send, yeah, I'll send, that, uh, that or some neat ones. Uh, the craziest part was, I, so I didn't go to the, I didn't make a stool for about three days up there. You didn't shit? No. Nah. Like cucumber soup is binding? Oh, uh, I don't know what it was, man. But, uh, and they're bringing in milk, and you're like, what did y'all milk? <laughs> We're at 11,000 feet, dude. <laughs> Where did you get this? I feel like Ndumke over there just sprayed out into a bucket, you know? <laughs> like, this seems like it could have been. And the exchange, like, you don't know how to communicate. So sometimes you don't know if they're laughing at you or with you. Uh huh. Uh, did you feel like they were laughing at you? <sighs> you know, it's funny because I tried to focus on, like, making people like smile or trying to do things like, like you know to them and stuff like yeah or something yeah yeah or you want to like feel that bridge of humor i guess a little bit yeah like between languages so i guess i tried to do stuff like that yeah sometimes i don't know that what they thought and also like black people always feel it always seems like they're laughing at you i feel like a lot of times when you're white like when they're in groups, you know? Dude, it's so weird when I go to other countries and I realize that I not only really am maybe racist, but completely racist because of <laughs> act ways where I'm like, this isn't these black people. Right, right, right. You know, right. There is no history of like gun violence in this town. Right. Of fucking wherever, <laughs> no. you know? If I see a black guy in China, I'm like, you are either an English teacher, you know, or a banker. But either yeah, way, yeah. you're not going to roll me. Yeah, yeah we're even. <laughs> yeah, so then it's we're like, even. fuck. But the fact that I'm like, wait, is my... I'm like, I'm racist. Damn. Yeah, man, I feel you, dude. Yeah, they get a bad rap here, black people. Excuse the pun. Well, and uh, and I'm not, I don't understand why overall black people aren't more upset at the British. Like, they did a lot of the shit. Like, yeah. Like, I, I agree America, like, brushed up on slavery and stuff like that. And, like, you know, but fucking just allowing the British to come right over here. If I were black, I wouldn't do that. Every British, I'd take them to task every time when I saw them in the street. What do you mean? 
be like, what the, you know, they they colonized most of the world and just oh, right. raped it of everything. Yeah, they brought the slaves here, right? I mean, they definitely, I think they had a huge hand in it. We didn't start slave trading after 1776. Yeah, they were, really? it was no. Was going. Oh, yeah, they were way early. So I just want to see that take place before we really get the brunt of it. The brunt of, oh, yeah. Oh, of like African American backlash. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Let's get start with the salesman, you know. <laughs> Fucking. So over this thing. yeah, it sounds good. Oh, there's people down there. Yeah, that's a much better way to spend a Wednesday. Much better what? Way to spend a Wednesday. Oh yeah, then in the studio, you mean? Yeah, just sweat through Oh yeah. Yeah, if I could combine these two things. Whenever I used to have to do, uh, dude, I took Benji's little Chihuahua dog up here through those, like when we're hiking up and down, trying to get over branches and shit. Yeah, we had me and Edgar would have to like pick him up and hand him to each other over the branches sometimes. But that dog was game. Really? Yeah, he was like, yeah, whatever. When he gets to a place where he just can't go anywhere, oh, all those ducks down there. Didn't he ride on a? Oh wow, that is a reservoir. Yeah, this is a reservoir. Yeah, there's a bunch right there. You think you could? You think you could? Yeah, let's find the trail. Right there. Around. Yeah. I don't know what we were saying. Fuck the British. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've never been a big fan of the British, dude, honestly. Yeah. This is this thing, by the way, this camping. I just told, I think there's a lot of us who like this. Like Moshe was, I was just like, yeah, I want camping. He's like, call me. I'd love to go fucking camping. Let's really? do some shit. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you just come up to these places, get a joint, and fucking just walk for... Oh, shit. Boom. Still going. Back? Yeah. Or like a comedian, like, men's retreat? Uh-huh. To go somewhere, you mean? Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. And don't even have to go far. Just have to really just get into the woods. Dude, we go to Joshua Tree a couple times a year. Yeah, that's what I hear. There. Well, I saw Byron Bowers' Instagram when he lost it a little. Oh, yeah. That he was lost awesome. It. Yeah, a few times. The fun thing is, it's people who try to control your mushrooms. And they're like, oh, we got to... And so Byron's flipping out. He goes, I got to wander off. And there's a couple people going, oh, yeah, it's steep as shit. All right. Literally taking the butt slide here. <laughs> Damn, what? Damn. We're... It's steep as fuck. <laughs> no, he's not yelling at us. Ari, off-roading with Ari Shafir here. Damn. Yeah, you butt slid that whole way. That's the most country shit I've done in a while, dude. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go over there. It's like a th- four-hour drive. Get a campsite. And that's pretty gnarly, huh? Yeah, take mushrooms, walk <laughs> around all night. You know, or our new plan now, because it's winter. Uh-huh. We were just talking about this. We uh-huh. look through the weather, and it's like high of like high 70s during the day so we're like let's do that during the day and walk around and then at night just build a fucking campfire yeah that'd be great dude yeah. i've never even been there really yeah oh it's, i hadn't as of a few years ago it's gorgeous is it yeah and there's nothing out there especially in the summer yeah. it's all just death so like Damn. there's no danger of like something coming <clears throat> to like you know bite at you right like a bear or a cat yeah it's not even i think late summer is not even snake season Oh, man. Oh, wow, dude. This is damn romance right here. Oh. This is damn romantic. Look at that little duck. Dude, we just wandered in a lover's cove down here. <laughs> this thing definitely could spray some luminol on this thing and solve some <laughs> so seems local fair. issues. Yeah. <laughs> Man. What if somebody just boated by and just gunned all these ducks down? It's <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Hey, man, got to eat. <laughs> no. Well, that used to be a thing growing up. People would go by, park by the river and just shoot guns into it. That was like into a... Into the river? Yeah, it was like a pastime. You know? Oh, you want water? Yeah, sure, man. Thanks. Yeah, that was like a pastime. Like, And I remember shoot one time... Into a lake? Into the river. Dude, did you grow up around Hicks? Uh, I grew up around more like white trash. Oh, right, right. What's the difference? What would you say the difference is? I would say that Hicks have like sports, like NASCAR. They have mm-hmm. like the the country flag, the rebel flag. White Trash has like... White Trash can be in Boston too. Yeah, it's more like burn barrels, burn your shit in the yard, make, start fire in a ditch. Poor and um, uncultured. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's more like the people from like making a murderer. 
It's the only show where I, right from the start, I was like, look, I don't want to ruin it for you, but you should go ahead and ruin it. I'm just going to get the entire story from other comics talking about it. Wow. And it's a pretty good story. Yeah. I mean, I really like it. I have not even... And haven't gotten into it. I don't even know what the guy looks like. But yeah. I'm like, he's innocent for sure. Yeah. You don't think so? Now I don't think it. Why? Because you've heard the retorts? Because I've, yeah, I've read a little bit more afterwards. I definitely thought it at first. Now I'm unsure. Isn't it amazing how through like the moving image you can make people believe whatever you want? 100%. Through what you include and what you don't include. I, after, the move, after I watched the whole series, I emailed the lady who had been murdered's brother. I found his email online at like what? 3 a.m., emailed him. And I was like, are you sure you guys got the right guy? Like, did you really? Yeah, I mean, I was just caught up in it. Like, I emailed like nine people in the freaking series. Yeah, what? Yeah, I was into it. <laughs> I was deep in there. Anybody write you back? Uh, uh, yeah, a couple people wrote me back. He didn't write you back. A couple other people wrote me back who were in it, wanting to raise funds. Are you sure the right? You got the right guy. Oh, that's crazy. Like, if somebody, Some and I think stranger, like, fuck, yes. Who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who are you? In hindsight, I'm like, dude, what a dick move you did. Like, that's, you just saw something that was catered to make the guy look innocent. Yeah, it must be tough when you believe somebody's guilty and then the stuff starts to come up. Like, maybe he didn't do it. And you're like, no, I've yeah. already come to peace with this. This is the guy. Yeah. You can't start making me think someone else did it now, even if they did. Well, imagine, like, the jurors. Like, what do they think? Like, yeah. If all of a sudden they think, dang, I got it wrong. Was the police, though, just tampered with the same police that set him up the first time, set him up the second time? But They're the ones who luckily uncovered the footage? To think that these people out there are like, you know, they're probably regular God-fearing, not super educated, but middle-class white people in the Midwest. Yeah. And they're probably good people. Those people are usually genuine people. Who, which people? The ones who did the it? The people. All of them. The cops and everything. Oh, right. Just yeah. when you think of where they come from. Yeah. Like, and sure, cops can be definitely edgier, but even in the Midwest, people are more salt to the earth a little bit yeah maybe overall but not like every one of them because when you think midwest i think the same thing like good you know goody two shoes and stuff but that's also fucking dayton ohio right where it's just fucking people stab the shit out of you yeah you know it ain't like yeah yeah that's a good point family ties right that's a good point and maybe i'm putting it i'm i'm, I'm thinking it's that way i would love it if you were a judge like you couldn't have done it you're a midwesterner <laughs> <laughs> not, no, not here you a yankee could have but let him free and get a few recipes from him. Do you hear about the, uh, they have in Italy, they have a Jeans Day? Jews Day? Jeans Day. Uh, <laughs> to, to celebrate, not celebrate, but the, some judge let off these convicted rapists because uh, the girl was wearing tight jeans. Uh -huh. And then on appeal, he goes, I mean, how can you even get those tight jeans off unless she helps you? And he's like, yeah, that's a good point. And he goes, you guys are free. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so they wear tight jeans day. No. To like, protest the fact that you can still get jeans off. <laughs> right. <laughs> if they're tight. Damn, I can't. I mean, well, it's crazy to think of all the people that were incarcerated wrongly now with DNA. Oh, yeah. Because there's times, I mean, to go back to murder, and there's times where I feel like I would have murdered someone. Yeah. But I DNA. Could, I know that I'm not smart enough to get away with it now. Especially now with all the cameras everywhere. Dude, with all the cameras everywhere, you're fucked. You, don't, you can't look enough places. You gotta come to a place like this. You gotta. Yeah. The ducks ain't talking. Uh uh. I mean, what if they're just telling us murders and we can't encrypt, decode it? I mean, I have too many texts back and forth with you that could be like discovered. Oh, that's true, huh? But if yeah, like, there's one, so many trails. Yeah, told people I was coming. But if like one of us just like pushed the other's head into this, you know, three inches of water, I don't thirty seconds. Yeah, it wouldn't take that long. Mm -mm. Just get me in a full Nelson. I'd go quick. Probably I'm halfway ready. <laughs> <laughs> get out, and, and then I you just leave their breath. body here, or just push it out and just be like. I don't know let people find it. And just like, no, I never met him. I don't know. I said, I said, get up there. I'll meet you. That'd be so crazy. Like, and you could just hide it like over right over in there somewhere. Yeah, I'm saying just like push it. Oh, you could hide it in the reeds. If you're willing to wander out in a little bit, you could hide them in the reeds. You'd have to hide it a little, I think. That's where you get caught in the hiding. Because you've yeah. got a dead body on you. Well, here's where we get caught. I bet there's a camera where we came in. So we'd see both of us come in, one of us leave. Maybe. Right there. You're like, what happened to your friend? Right, right. Oh, he just decided to stay for a bit? Yeah, like if they found you, hey, no big deal. But if they di found you dead, yeah. I'm in fucked. Oh, I just left him. He's just relaxing by himself. The fuck? That's not even... I mean, you could say if you went off to like Sequoia or something, some like forest forest, you know, you'd be like, ah, he wandered off. As long as you wander off with him, it'd just be like, yeah, we all kind of stayed here. He said, I'm going to go for a walk. And it, I kept looking and looking. He just never came back. Yeah. Oh, he must have fallen and bashed his head with a... 
<laughs> with a club. With, with a club. With a bat you had. Yeah. <laughs> with an aluminum bat someone must have left here in the woods. They should have used a rock. <laughs> Look at their heads of ducks. That really is du- fucking water that's off crazy. a duck's back. It doesn't even stick. Oh, wow. That's true, huh? That's where it comes. Look how it just beads up and yeah. just jumps right off. They don't even get wet. Beautiful animals, dude. They really are. Mallard. I'm surprised there's not more duck for sale. Like, I'm surprised that chicken made it as the, one of the main meats. Duck's way sweeter, though, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and it's harder. I mean, there's not as much meat on them as it looks like. It's a lot of feathers on there. Oh. And it's not as, uh, I don't think, I guess, as tasty to everybody. Oh. And I feel like people romanticize ducks a little bit more because they are more attractive looking. Yeah, sure. More Whereas chickens, looking. people just are like, ah, oh, fuck, this, fuck thing. this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have chickens when I grew up. Did you really? Yeah, my dad suddenly he wanted it, what remind him of when he was growing up. So he's like, I'm getting a coop. He just built a coop out of like lattice wood. Yeah. Just then we had like fucking 20 chickens. No! Yeah. What'd you guys do? Did you ever go out there? You just kind of pass oh, by? Sure, I go out there. I go in there. We get the eggs in the morning. Sometimes they, they wouldn't want to give them the egg because that means like, the rooster got to them <laughs> yeah. and they're fertile. They're fertilized eggs. They'd be like, no. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> this one's going to be a chick. Oh. Um, Somebody's been... Uh, yeah, then one hit puberty and turned into a rooster. And we had, to, we had to get rid of it because it was like fucking suburbs. Yeah. And the next one neighbor was like, what? No. <laughs> yeah. No. We're not having a rooster at 5.45 in the morning go off when I want to sleep till 6.45. <laughs> Dude, that's like somebody put in a beehive by us one time, like a really? huge stack of them in a residential neighborhood. Really? And literally, yeah, like 40 kids got stung like repeatedly, <laughs> and then they finally caught them and shut it down. Somebody in my neighborhood in New York, like two things over, he was like, I, I went in there, it's one of those public parks, and he was like, yeah, I'm getting bees. Like, wow. I'm like, yeah, I live over there. And he goes, oh, well, you'll have definitely have my bees in your backyard. And I was like, oh, cool. Wait, what? No, I don't. <laughs> no. I don't want that. Yeah, I'm not going to tell, but if someone else does. Yeah. I wouldn't fight against it. Do you feel, uh, and how often do you live in New York? I live there nine months. Oh, so that's what we were talking about. How fun New York is. Yeah. Yeah, you do get more social. It's a way more social town. People are doing things there. Right. So it's like, let's go out. Let's get, it's not like, let's get rested for tomorrow for auditions or anything like that. There's some auditions and shit, but it's not like, no one has to be there for that genuinely. So it's just like, let's just fuck around. Let's see some shit. Let's meet for lunch. Everyone's, you don't have to get in a car to meet anybody. Just right. the subway. So it's like, hey man, I'm going to be over there by the best buddy. You want to? Right, it's easier. Up. Yeah. Um, or mostly you leave from clubs and you go to a place. If you're at the store, there's two or three places you can go. Yeah. You can go to the Den. You can go to the Whiskey. You can go to Mel's. You can go to Mel's. Yeah, I mean, to eat, to I eat, guess. Yeah. But it's like, there's not really anywhere to go. I don't know. No. And you hanging out. Oh, if somebody put a bar right next to there? Yeah, a bar bar. Not like the Sky Bar where right. it's like, oh, this is douchey. Yeah. I just mean like uh, an Irish bar that's yeah. not like overly themed. It's just like, uh eh. It's got some pictures of horse racing because the old owner used to like horse racing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the man. Stand, we go with the waitresses and stuff and the, oh, and the wait yeah. staff and, the, and all the kitchen staff. We go right next door to that place, Patty's. Oh, yeah. And we'll stay there till 3, 4. Yeah, that you place know? is great. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I was just there a week and a half ago. You, did they put you up at the stand? Um, Yeah. Oh, that's good. It was awesome. Yeah, I like that place a lot. That's like my home club in New York. Oh, I had one of the, my favorite sets I've ever had in my whole life there. Really? And, and the standing room, that new little one they have out mm-hmm. of LIC. But my thing is there in New York, it's new stages at least. So it's not the same tricks of like, I know how to do the original room. Right. You know? Yeah, you do fall into some patterns. Yeah, and I follow the same guys, you know, not every time, but enough where it's like, I know how to follow Ingram now. Right. There's no question. I'll just got to do three minutes of crowd work and then right. I can get into my stuff. Right. You know? Um, but there's other guys, it's like, I don't know, there's an MC between everybody. Yeah. I know, it's just different. There's different audiences. You got more tourist audiences. More in tourists. Too. Here, I feel like everything's just the industry. Yeah, there's a lot of industry or just LA residents, but those yeah. overlap so much. Yeah. You know, like some guy who's like a copywriter or like, you know, an animator for, for Fox. It's like, I guess he's the industry, but he can't help me at all. Yeah. <laughs> he's just an illustrator who got this job here, you know. Yeah. You think of moving there? I'm thinking I'm going to do a couple months this summer. How? Just like either do like some kind of a swap or just go and sublet a place you for a go for months. August? Huh? You want to go for August? I'm not going to maybe go for August. Why are you going to swap out? I'm in Edinburgh. Oh, you are? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'm going to decide here in the next couple of weeks and figure it out. Okay. Well, I haven't given it to anybody yet. So. Just trying to get the logistics down now. Yeah. I mean, all of August, I'll be gone. Yeah. So. I mean, that could probably be something I could like. I mean, I, I could let you know here in a week. Okay. Yeah. No rush. Yeah. But yeah. That'd be dope, I'd like man. to let Thanks people use the it. Offer. It's in a sweet spot. Yeah? Yeah. The East Village is cool as fuck. Yeah. Like I just felt cool. like I go outside and I can be like human. Like I sometimes I'm here, man. I don't feel fucking human, dude. And I start to get Why? stuck Why? in my own head. 
because I'm just by myself most of the time, man. Yeah, it's a lonely town here. Oh, I ne- and I came from Louisiana where people's just super friendly, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you could be peeping Tom, and if it's dinner, they'll invite you and eat, you know? They don't care if he's out there watching, <laughs> you know? Let's walk him around. You got to leave at some point, yeah. right? Yeah, man. It's hard. Right. You know? Got here late. Uh-uh. Okay. Um, Let's go this way. Come up around the woods that way. Right. But yeah, so I think that's what I miss is feeling like that I'm a human being with that, like... Well, you should know there's like an aggressive loneliness in New York, too. Ooh, because what is that come, like? You come in contact with more people that uh-huh. are not talking to you. Here, it's like you only come in contact with like 10, 15 people. Right. You know, the lady at Ralph's ringing you up or whatever. Right. Most of these people in their cars. There, you pass hundreds of people a day that will not look at you wow so, yeah so you get your friends and you go do social things but actually to me anyway it makes me drive to be social because i'm like fuck i need someone to talk to wow and they're there there's tons there so you so yes yeah, so you really got to branch out and make that happen for yourself too yeah but then you do you end up doing it right you know you just don't accept not doing it because you're like you know you're fucking lonely as shit when i went to china it was the same way for like eight nine days it was i was cool to be myself and then i got fucking lonely really and then i just made friends and so what kind of friends did you make like american friends or friends that's... expat friends canadian american uh, yeah those are most of them you know but there was some like british guys too um i mean english speakers and uh, so how long was that experience about 20 days oh wow china. so yeah from day nine or ten on you know i spent two days in beijing um and or two nights really like a day and two nights and uh i have a friend that i'm still friends with lives in boston huh and how do you feel like the chinese compare to different asians what do you mean like i mean because the japanese i feel like you see them they're more docile you know oh there's it's safe as fuck there in china yeah there's no crime really it's totalitarian so it's like it's a mixture of like their government ain't gonna put up with it the penalties are severe right this, this black comic who was there I think in Beijing got caught uh, purse snatching. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, on, on the train. Oh. They found him so easily because there's like 12 black people in yeah. Beijing. So they're they like, literally him up, put him in a thing. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully this girl's not racist enough. She can tell. She's like, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was like case closed within an hour. Damn. <laughs> but they gave him like eight months. What? Yeah. So it's like if that's the pu- if that's the punishment for hoping, hopefully getting 200 bucks. Right. Like, top end is like, yes, that's a good pull. I got $200. It is not worth eight months in a Chinese prison. Oh. So, like, they just do it mixed with a mixture of, like, they just respect themselves and their family name a lot more. Right. So they wouldn't want to bring shame to anybody. Yeah, here so we don't have that. The slap in the wrist, they'd be like, fuck, now my dad knows. Everybody knows that I'm a fucking shoplifter. You almost have to kill yourself then, huh? Yeah, sort of. And here, we almost, though, I feel like make crime seem cool uh-huh yeah so huh? some people do it yeah dude they showed this thing on a, on a train where they had so it's a state-run media too uh-huh and so they were showing this there's an uprising in the south of china uh-huh the uyghurs they're the only ethnic minority that, that's there uyghurs yeah w-u-i-g-e-r something like that oh okay i thought you meant like oh yeah yeah but they're treated the same Uyghurs. that's what i thought you meant oh yeah <laughs> oh no but um so they're rising up, but they don't have guns. So they show this video of this mahjong game, and this everyone's crowded around this mahjong game, and this one guy just opens his shirt, takes out a hatchet, no swing, no the lady, and this other guy next to him is like, oh, it's on, and he fucking pulls out his matchet, hatchet, and they're just swailing at people playing mahjong, mayhem, you know, people start hitting him with chairs, they're hatcheting this one lady over and over again. They're just trying to create, like... But they're showing that on a fucking train with little kids around. It's crazy. Yeah, they just blur out right when the strike comes into the head. They blur that little patch out. And what are they trying to say? These people are fucking dissenting. They're creating, you know, war for us here. Look what they're doing to innocent Mahjong people. Don't support the Uyghurs, I guess. <sighs> you know, as you grow up, if the issue comes up, you should Don't know they're the, they're, they're, the, they're the bad ones. Yeah, never support a Uyghur. Damn. Anyway, Whatever. Wiggers are dying out, though, in America. Do you feel that? Yeah, Santino has a bit about it now, and he's like, it's not even a word anymore. I don't even know if you guys know what that is. Yeah. Like, it was a thing for a while, and now it's just like, they're just acting like the way they act. People don't call it black anymore. Right. You're not acting black just because you listen to Macklemore. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like everything's been co-opted. That's true, dude. So what other hikes do you go on? What's the other joys of hiking? Obviously, Um, you want to see some sort of ritual or some sex in the woods. Have you ever fucked in the woods? Uh, I don't think so. 
I fucked on a rooftop yeah. in a Victoria's Secret dressing room one time. Did you really? Yeah. That was pretty Did good. Really? When I was younger and I was more virile. You could just do it right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I got to just, at least I need a half hour to kind of get my shit together. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give me some warning. But, uh, yeah, let me... Uh, I'm going to get a bottle of water Let first. me get some water out of bed. Yeah, let me relax a little, huh? Let me read. I'm going to read for 15 minutes. Concentrate. Yeah. I, I exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, out in the woods? No, I don't think so. Oh, camping. I remember making love to this girl. When we were both underagers, man. Yeah. We are both children, yeah. And that was good back then. I feel like sober sex is for children. Do you ever feel like that? <laughs> no, not the way I fuck. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you, only, you only fuck when you're drunk? I mean, I just feel like it's more... It's wilder. Yeah, it's just... It's. I feel like it's just... You're just too jaded at this. There's so many... When you're sober. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're like, yeah, this is... Uh, what am I don't I know, I was asking you to shower. It's like, just give me... And when you're drunk, it's like, give me that. Yeah. The Rogan has a bit about that. Just, you're really ask without even questioning it Yeah. Yeah, without even questioning it. Without even putting on a different shirt first. You know? (laughs) Without even putting on your good ass-eating bib. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, wait, haven't you been sweating all day? (laughs) That's the thing about New York, dude. In the summertime, when it gets that humidity that's dank in there, so even at night it gets to, like, high 70s Mm. with humid. So it's Mm. like, and then you get a girl back to your place, and the rot, the stench is just, like, wafting. I don't know if you like that, but, like, Tripoli calls it the... uh, the power scrub, where as soon as they go into your uh, apartment, they're like, hey, is the restroom real quick? And then yeah. they run that water before they even start peeing, and you know, they're just fucking... <laughs> they wow. Make it presentable. Look at that lizard. Lizards are cool as fuck, dude. That's one of the coolest parts of SoCal. You think? I don't know if I'd be that animal if I had to be an animal. But the other thing is, so many other animals get gunned down. Nobody ever guns down a lizard. Nobody guns down a lizard. Maybe one of those kimono dragons. Oh, yeah. Komodo? Uh, and those Tasmanian devils. Have you seen those? Mm-mm, not live. Get rid of them. Really? They're gross, dude. You've they seen are. them? Yeah. When you were there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh... No, that's Tasmania's... Where did I see? I've seen them twice. I've seen them at two different, I guess, you nature bite reserves. me if I try to, like, get at it? Oh, I bet it might. I don't want to... You're going to go for it? I mean, they're just quick. I don't think it'll bite you. I wonder if it jumps at you. Once it's on your arm, you're not getting it off. I mean, you're for sure going to drop the mic, but, like... Well, I just don't want to be that dude that died out here by a lizard bite. Yeah, if he, once he gets at your eye, if he gets in there fast enough and just crawls in... You're done. You're done. Yeah, we had a uh, cleaning lady when we were young who slept over one night and a roach got in her brain. <laughs> she died? I don't know if she died. Wait, really? Yeah, I swear to God. Damn. I mean, ca- I don't want to be callous about it, but that's sort of her fault. I mean, I don't think he... What? I mean, if the place was cleaner, he wouldn't have roaches. Oh, that's a good point. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, mean, I might take that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's hilarious. I can't believe I, I've thought about that in my life a couple times and never had that kind of uh, come to pass in my head. <laughs> yeah, Roach got in her brain, man. She had to get it cut out or they put her in a surgery. Yeah. Yeah. But she was nice. One of the most first Spanish people I ever met. Really? Yeah, I don't know where we are. Do you? No, I, I think we got to go like there. But okay. I don't know how to get around there. Maybe it's there. Or maybe it's through there. I think maybe. What? Up and around? Or this. What? I think we take this little road right uh, around here. Around it? Yeah, maybe. Dude, this is what I love about the woods, too. Oh, this one right here? Oh, uh, yeah. sure. Is that what you mean? <clears throat> uh, it looks... Yeah, that'll take us around. Oh, yeah, there's a theater. Mm-hmm. I like just getting lost. Yeah? Just like, all right, let's pick this way. As long as the path doesn't end, we can take it. And then just figure out where we go. And then it's like, I think there's a path down there. Let's cut through. And it, like where we cut through before the deers were. And at some point, like, another path might not have appeared. We found right. a road, but, like, something will. Or once you do get a one, you're like, I don't know what this connects to. Right. And I like that period of the night where it's like, dude, it's starting to get dark. Like, we got to right. start finding our way out of here. Right. You know, the little bit of fright. Yeah, like, who, and yeah, it starts to kind of test your metal a little. <laughs> yeah. Like, hold on, where's the sun right now? Do you, uh, I got a question, couple questions for you, man. So, do you, like, I mean, I know you have a lot of friends and stuff in comedy. I feel like, you know, even just, like... Keep moving out here like you're kind of your name is one of the names you hear like a lot of, like in different social and comedic circles yeah. within comedy you know business and social circles but i mean do you feel like you would kind of like until you're because sh- i know you got your show until that did you feel like personally and that you'd achieved like success as far as your standard or what take me through a little bit of that if you don't mind 
Um, I started viewing success like kind of differently. Right. I started viewing it as like nothing to do with um, the stuff I've been granted. Right. Um, you know, half hour specials or premium blends. You know, none of those I got. Right. Um, movies, sitcoms. You know, I wasn't even getting auditions. So at some point, I was like, "Well, this can't be what I'm looking to get." Right. You know, These are the like, things that some, are coming some along. Other person to get me. Yeah, and it might be cool and all, but like, it's like commercial. I did a lot of commercial work, but that never led to anything that was like scam work it was cool you know decent paychecks but then right. it's like nobody's gonna put you in anything else or like put you on stage anywhere right you know unless you have a huge really popular campaign but you know those celebrities too like huge more sacrifice shit oh yeah i'll get a peep of this one <laughs> um so i just started viewing success as like if i start pro- producing like material right um and so then i did a special i mean a cd at the comedy works and then I was like, let me go a year later. Let me try to do a, a special. And then I did. And then like 16 months after that, I did another one. So that so you I'm feel like... So I'm successful because I'm doing your job. the art. Yeah, and I might die penniless. I don't know. But like, right. so did Van Gogh, right? Right. That's and a good point. He was successful as fuck. Dude, if, you, if, if anybody ever told you you might look like Van Gogh a little? <laughs> nah. Bro, I think I've only seen one picture of the dude. I fucking think you might look like him, bro. You know who I've been getting a lot lately? Who? Um, the guy from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, um, who had the rose in his mouth. Oh, uh, Don Flamenco? Don Flamenco. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I used to uh, work out with this guy who looked like Don Flamenco, and he was a drug dealer, actually. This homosexual guy. Yeah. And, uh... I smoked weed with him the night Princess Diana died, and I'm sitting there high as fuck on his couch eating this little cutlet, <laughs> and uh, and he told me he's homosexual, and I didn't know, like, I was so fucking high, dude, and, like, I didn't even know mean? who Prince, Princess Diana was, and I was just like, what the fuck is going on, man? <laughs> but he looked like Don Flamenco. Yeah, so that's uh, it. So when I started viewing more stand, it's like stand-up as a success, then I, like, how much do you go on the road? Pretty good bit. Okay, so it's like, then I would I would work towards something. You know, and then, right. so I'm successful because I'm doing it. So then, like, other stuff has come around, the, the storyteller show. Right. You know, every Tuesday night. Yes. Um, so achieving your goals as a comedian. Yeah, so, like, I started that show at the side room of the improv. Remember the old side room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little side room. Yeah. I think it's yeah. back now, maybe? Yeah, yeah, now it's back. Oh, that's great. But um, we started there just as a fun show to do. And, like, that was fun. Let's do that again. Let's get people to come out. And then, like, it took a couple years before, like, should we try to get this on TV or something? Right. Because it was already, like... If we had four out of five stories kill and one was pretty good, like, well, that's a great night. Yeah. That's success. Boom, we did it. A ride high on that for a month. Yeah. You know? And people are like, well, these guys aren't buying it. It's like, uh, okay, I guess, but I still did the, Stayed the with great it. thing. Yeah, like if you write on Twitter, you know, if you have 50 followers and you get a tweet that gets you like 100 retweets, that's a massive that's success. Huge. But if Rogan gets 100 retweets, it's like, he probably might delete it. Be like, right. oh, fuck, nobody liked it. You know, it's like you just do whatever you can based on what you got. I don't know. So that's all. I just stopped looking at it that way. Right. No, and, that's but a good stuff point. has come around. I don't know if it's because of that attitude or just because of like, you know, between 12 and 16 years in comedy, stuff starts to happen. But you think having that open attitude where it's like, I'm just going to focus on my, on what I can do. Yeah. And my craft and the rest of this stuff is. So like when Comedy Central comes to me and they want to do a show, it's like, cool, you can do my show. Right. But it's it's my show, and I'll tell you how to do it. Right. And we'll, I'll be open to suggestions, but, like, no one's going to boss me. Like, it's only about doing it right. right. So there's no, like, what about dancing in the middle? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> if you want to do that, it's, you know, I respect your opinion. Go find somebody to do that. But that's right. not, you know. Whereas before, I would have been like, okay. Yeah. I guess I'll take some dance classes. How much dancing? Yeah. yeah, I know. Sure, Maybe I Jeremiah dance. Watkins, I think he also dances. Yeah. He does yeah, everything. Exactly. Man, I think he dances a lot. That guy's going to be, yeah, he's so talented. Uh, um, yeah, that's it. I don't know. So I saw you going to New York is like, I can get more stage time, what, the workout stuff, and, and perform on these different stages and maybe grow my act a little. Yeah. So like, I made some more money on the road, so I'm like, let's take that and invest it in fucking more expensive housing. Right. And to be a New York Enjoy your life a, a little bit. Yeah, there's yeah. that too. Like, Segura was like, oh, I wish I could go to... Um, what's it called? Let's go to uh, New York movie. That sounds cool. I'm like, why don't you? Was, I mean, this was like two years ago. Three years. He's like, well, you know, I got a wife, and it's like, I mean, so you're just telling me you have an excuse why you're not? I mean, I guess, yeah, yeah. sure, but like, I don't move with her, or like, I don't know, or you're not enjoying your life as much as you wanted to, right? You know, I'm sure you're having a good time, but if you want to do something and you can't, that means you're not, you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah, you know? I think that's where I get stuck sometimes. I mean, if just, I want to go to Mount Kilimanjaro and it's like, well, I can't because I'm on NBC Nightly News every night and it's a good job, I'm still I'm like, that's holding me back from going to Mount Kilimanjaro. Right. Yeah, it can even be something just because it's something that's making money or that it's a job, you can still f- 
fit stuff in, even if it's, yeah, I guess you got to find those things that are holding, like, holding you back and see if they're real things or not. Yeah. So, like, I went to Edinburgh, where it's like, I've always heard about it, mm-hmm. you've heard about it too. Yeah. And it was like, they always said, like, it's a great place to lose 10 grand. And I'm like, well, I can't afford to do that. Right. And then I tried it last year and I did it. I lost $7,500. Yeah. But it was one of those where it's like, look, I'm hoping to break even. We'll see if I don't, but I have enough money where it's not going to break me to do right. that. And I want to get this experience. So. Was it awesome? It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. And that's why I'm going back next year. So Damn. I want my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, yeah. good. Yeah. Got a place no, in No, it August. was fucking awesome, man. So many comics, so many different comics you've never heard of, and no one's heard of you. So you get up with not a single person going like, oh. Right. It's just like, okay, next person. We'll just, I don't know. What are you going to say funny? Yeah, it's got to be a unique slate kind of to have. Yeah. It's interesting, man. It's all interesting. Why? What do you hear about me around the scene? No, you just always hear, or you just hear your name all the time. You know, which is good. I think, you know, you just hear that you have a lot of friends in comedy, it seems like, which I think oh, yeah. is something that kind of usually speaks for people, you know, but... Uh, I get, like, a few people that hate me, and then, like, a bunch of people that like me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get, but I think that has to be everybody, right? Maybe. Do you feel like, do you feel like whenever you started that you wanted more people, like your goal was to have people like you, or do you no, feel like... No, you? I mean, maybe some of it just because you want people to like you, but at some point, we, at the comedy store, we were so antagonistic, that's when it was real shitty. Right. You know, you're... you're now it's sold out, sold out like 20 straight days. Now you got to do well there. But then it was like, I would work the cover booth and it was days of Tuesdays and Wednesdays where it's like you weren't allowed to start with less than eight people. And then she changed to six people because we couldn't start. Damn. So it was like 9.45, 10. The show's supposed to start at nine. We're sitting there with four people just waiting to get the show started. And like, we had to like create this like mythology around ourselves. Like we're the toughest comics, fuck everybody else. Right. So I only wanted the comedy store people to like me and like the more well-known like guys I could respect. Like right. Ron McDonald was never there, but like I wanted him to respect. Him. <laughs> right, like right. But like, yeah. So we weren't looking for everyone to like us. We we're actually looking for everyone to. Th- we actually trolled, I guess. You guys were rebellious a yeah, little. Yeah, we're trolls. We're just dicks. And is it different to see the the store now then? Because the, the store now, I mean, some people say it's become a little more commercial, and I don't know if way it's... way more like, way more of that. But it's become more not commercial because the acts are still as dark or whatever as they were. Right. They ain't like they're like, well, we need clean people early. No. It's still just like whatever, but it's just like top level people. Right. And there's cameras everywhere. There's no more fucking in the back. Yeah. No, I mean, I got Mitzi said no to me once. You know, mm-hmm. she said no, you're not good enough yet. And I went to the main room and I picked up a chair and I just threw it. And then I threw another one. I just threw a temper tantrum for twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah. But no one was in the main room. Yeah. It was just a, <laughs> o- an open room that no one went into. <laughs> and then it becomes so popular to go in there and smoke. With you. They had to lock the doors. They yeah. can't let people in there now. Yeah, now you do that, you'd fucking have a lawsuit with 30, yeah, 30 exactly. people against you. Yeah, they banned it. Then it was like, then it was just like, no one even thought about it. It was just like, uh, all right. Well, they're also bridging, I think, that gap between alt comedy. Like, they used to keep, like, you know, when Tommy was there, it was like some people were allowed, some people weren't, and some people didn't want to come back anymore, and then now it's like everybody can come. Yeah. You know? Everybody can come. When, when, when Egot was there, there's one cool thing he did. I, it, Tommy did take it into a little bit more, like, invite Steve Burns and people that are, like, developed from other cities, like, and Dove. It's like, you guys are good. Why don't you just come and be part of it? You know? He started it a little bit that way, and then Adam just reached out and was like, hey, no more showcase system. He would, like, call Hannibal... You know, Greg Fitzsimmons, Tom Poppy's like, you guys are some of the best comics in the country. Right. So you're not going to bump, but here's a number to call in. You're all, right. if you want it, you're regulars. So, yeah. Like this ridiculous yeah, he's done a good job of taking control, so he doesn't have to fucking answer any later questions, too, I feel like. Oh, right. Like setting it down from the beginning. Like, yeah, you know, you're not going to bump people, but you can come, yeah. Yeah, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah, he tells people right away. He's like, mm, I don't see it. I mean, see, yeah, right away, he told. He was like, he was like, yeah, I'd like to go on next. And he's like, no, I can't. He goes, What's, why? What do you mean? And Adam had to be like, dude, I'm not the other guy. Right. We both know what this is. Right. Like, you don't add a great, like, vibe to this place. And we all know about the other stuff. So there's no more bumping. Like, you're a regular from the lady before. Right. So uh, he respects that. Right. If you got passed before, he won't, like, take that away from anybody. But, like, he's like, but here's the number to call. And there's 15-minute spots. And even that's like, eh. I think Carlos is like, well, fuck this. That's crazy, man. Yeah, but like that's what it is. Like, why are everybody bowing down? Like letting Dane Cook bump. Yeah. Like, dude, they can't even draw anymore. Never puts his name on a marquee. Why are you letting him in just to ruin the vibe? Yeah, he's it's sold out anyway, stuff. and you're gonna come let him fuck it up. They do that with the improv shows all the time. Yeah, improv doesn't. Yeah, they don't Some stand up against him. Sold out show, and then like the headliner goes on. Dane wants to go right before him. He's like, let him go right after him. Yeah. It's a late show. He can do as long as he wants after. And then it's like at some point, you're like, why are you going on at all? Yeah. You didn't help us sell out the show. We don't need you. Yeah, I think it is cert- if he were just a little bit more rewarding to the people that are, you not know, putting these shows on. Yeah, not at all. Just, you know? just expects it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part where I guess you got to be conscious of when you start to expect shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
people do that at the comedy store. If they like randomly, like Mitzi loved them, mm -hmm. and then you get a spot some week, like early Maz, like very early. Yeah. Before he had like the queen of fucking Jordan introducing him on video clips mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, he didn't get a spot. He's like, what, what, what's what's the matter? What's what's going on? And I wanted to be like, Maz, you're right now one of the people she's looking to improve. Right. Like, you don't deserve shit. Right. You know? Like, when I was a regular, working. if I didn't get a spot, it was like, yeah, that means she got the right call. Right. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. But if you get them all the time, you're like, what the fuck? What's happening here? And it's like, wake up call. <laughs> you know? And it wasn't always like that. But then it's like, yeah, all these new people, you just expect you. Like, I've been doing comedy three years. Yeah. And it's about time <laughs> yeah. that I get shown the respect I deserve. You know? Oh, I'm con I feel like, yeah. Do you feel like this business constantly humbles you, though? Constantly. Yeah. Right? Constantly. So this is your first special? Yeah, this is the first one, man. Did you have a half hour? I had a half hour for Comedy Central, yeah. Okay. So there was that, but that was the worst experience of my life. In what? Boston, we shot it. Oh, you did those in and Boston? And I just hated it. Was those a Brody Stevens year where he did all the interviews? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. It was just the worst. Uh, it just was a bad night for comedy, I think. Oh, the crowd was bad. The crowd was horrible. There was, like, homeless people sleeping in there and shit, like, staying warm. It was hours late, but also like you know my, maybe my attitude got bad and I didn't arise to the you know it could have been a mix of things. But it's also a lot of those half hours used to be in such a big place. Yeah, that it was like these comics. This is the biggest room they've ever played. Oh, 100 percent. And so they're not even they're playing 80, 80 seaters. Yeah, at best and going wow that's amazing. And you're putting them in a thousand seater. Yeah, it's different cadence. Yeah, it's like I think they don't realize this is what I try to tell them. They don't realize how there is a. Um, there's nuances and stuff to comedy. It's not yeah. just like, we'll put it on, we'll film it, it's fine. It's like, you got to get a good crowd. So like for my specials, I'm like, yeah, I'm selling tickets. Right. They're like, no, no, we'll just give out tickets for, I'm like, no, no, nobody gets a free ticket. Is it going to be a good audience member? Yeah. You get my fans in there. Yeah. We're going to shine. Yeah. You know? For yeah. That, for that storyteller show, it's like, yeah, man, let's make it a good experience. We got to get air conditioning if it's warm. Like, yeah, we'll still get the shot. You can get the shots, but it won't look good. Right. The comic's bombing. You can tell it on his face. <laughs> you can add in whatever you want to add in. Oh. Dude, I had to cut around a guy at the end. He <laughs> delivered his last line. And uh -huh. those stories, you know how they are. Uh -huh. That Brad Pitt story is fucking killer. Thanks, man. But um, at the end, sometimes you have a line where it's like, we're done now. Yeah. So this guy had one, and it didn't land. <laughs> and then they realized like 10 seconds later, five seconds later, but five full seconds later that it was done. And so then they like, gave him the clap. But he was like, ba bum ba bum ba boom No laugh. And you just see him go... <laughs> and then they start clapping and I had to cut that out because I'm like that's a guy who just saw defeat <laughs> he just saw waiting for it got nothing I was like fuck and I was like you know what I mean you can't fake that shot there's no way to add laughs on that to make him look like yeah this is what I wanted <laughs> yeah that's the worst and you know it's bad and it's on tape and you're like fuck how are we going to cut yeah. around this so where did you do the Netflix one we shot it down in New Orleans, man. Oh, hell yeah. A lot of, so for a lot of friends Where? and family came. Jack's? This place called, no, this place called Civic Theater. We got a theater okay. down there and did it. Um, and some people had never been to a comedy show taping. So some people were like cheering like it was a football game. Like, really? like there was a lady yelling defense the whole show. They had <laughs> really? to throw her out. Yeah, like lady, like it's not even dressed in LSU gear. Like it was just. Really? I mean. <laughs> just a drunk? Oh, yeah. Just like, what do you, what do you think this is? Like. I love that where you're like, what? oh, there's no reasoning with you. <laughs> yeah. You're not. You didn't just get it wrong. You're yeah. completely. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Thanks so much for having me, dude. You're welcome. So it's on Netflix now. What's it called? Yeah, Netflix is called No Offense. Um, you know, we talk about everything in there. Uh, gays, a little bit of blacks growing up in the South. You know, uh, yeah. Persians mildly. Um, Can you feel? Who cares? It's like this is what they do in Edinburgh. They try to like run down what your show talks about. Oh, but I'm really? like, that doesn't really give you an idea of yeah. how funny some of these. Just the topic choice. Yeah, it doesn't. And I'm just trying to. I mean, my biggest thing is I'm just trying to get my personality out there. You know, like I mean, I'm not the best joke writer, but I like to share this shit that's just inside of me. And so that's it, really. Yeah, no, you've gotten really good on stage. Thanks, man. It's been fun, dude. You yeah. know, and the comedy store has changed my life. I mean, being accepted over there and being so welcomed mm -hmm. by people, it's changed my whole. It's changed so many things and the about spots me. That don't matter there. Yeah. It's like, go bomb. Who cares? Yeah. And just like a feeling of camaraderie. Like otherwise, I just feel like I was yeah. wandering around town. And at least there, I know I can go there and there's somebody's hand I can shake or somebody if I need Yeah, to. that's how I have a Jeff, Jeff Keith and people like that. They're yeah. like, oh, you're a Brea comic? Like, who are your friends? Yeah. Who, who, where do you? <laughs> yeah. Like at the store, you know how it is. You sit there and you, I don't know, you drink yeah, whatever. Yeah, at least or you, you can just hang yeah, out for You three can hours. listen to someone. Mm -hmm. Or there's someone like who's like in the hall who just did something awesome and you can like, you know, from the experience. Like the other night I'm sitting in the back and Mark Marin, uh, Tom Rhodes, Joe Rogan, Sebastian Maniscalco, yeah. and uh, Brian Sclair, everybody's sitting in this room and I'm just sitting there. You can and just I, listen. Yeah, and I just realized this is one of the times when I don't talk. Yeah. Sometimes you got to tell yourself. You're like, I want to say, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. nope, nope, I'm an outsider yeah, yeah. here. Let me just observe. Oh, I said one thing and Sebastian looked at me. 
<laughs> and just started laughing. He's so nice. But uh, that's when I realized, I was like, yeah, I don't think I know if I'm, I can fucking talk yet. Like, we've all sold out the Beacon Theater <laughs> yeah, and there's Theo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you're constantly humbled. Sebastian sold out the Beacon fucking six to eight shows in a row. Oh, he's so funny, bro. He's so fucking funny. He sold out six or eight shows in a <laughs> row. Dude, just to give you context, so I walk by there to go stand up in New York all the time. Uh-huh. So I pass see the marquee all the time. I saw Billy Wayne Davis open up for uh, Sturgill Simpson there. Wow. It's a cool place. That's a big place. Mariah Carey did three nights, and Sebastian did six. Damn. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Good for him, man. I asked him, I was like, can you give me some advice? I saw him in, uh, at Foxwoods, and he's like, uh, you like Michael Jackson? And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who doesn't? He's like, Munich. Uh, Munich, Munich, 88, watch it. You know, that's not a good impression. But he's like, uh, he <laughs> that's fucking terrible just, what, yeah. what did he do? He's like, uh, he, 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 Munich. He's like, watch Munich. He's like, he's like, that's what it is. Like, everything is just on point. Everything is so, like, you know, to a T. Hold up. You know, yeah. Yeah. And that was interesting to me that he got some of his inspiration from there. You can almost see it sometimes when he's on stage. Like, he gets like, I don't know. <laughs> that Michael Jackson <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can almost see it a little. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, that, and that's the best part is just getting to see so many fucking... Yeah, that's cool, too. Uh, Sebastian's one of my examples, actually. If I get high in the back and I'm walking out, everyone's leaving, unless everyone's like, I gotta go back to my family, whatever. And then I peek my head and Sebastian's there. Man, I can just sit in the back yeah. there on a dead night, too, especially, and just laugh. Yeah. And just have, hear him talk about bottomings <laughs> instead of toppings on a fucking froyo. <laughs> yeah. And I was, like, just dying. What are bottomings? You're thinking bottomings? <laughs> no, yeah. Now? Bottomings? You, no. He's got this new bit where he went over to somebody's house, an adult, and they made him take his shoes off the door. <laughs> yeah. He says, I can't fucking talk to a guy who doesn't have his fucking shoes on. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, where can people reach you on Twitter and shit? You can just find me at Theo Vaughn, man, and I'll blast this out, you know. Two and, ends. Uh, uh, just one end. Oh. T H E O V O N. I can't use my full last name. It's Von Kernatowski. Really? Yeah, which you actually means it? the Jew Slayer, actually, so I can't use it. <laughs> so I got to use Von. But uh, yeah, it's just Theo Von. So. Uh, it would have been great if you killed me on this. <laughs> no, it been it was full the Jew Slayer. You'd be like, I had to go my full name now. Somebody would have <laughs> covered that. Somebody would have covered that, and it would have been like the back of the post. <laughs> Theo Jew Slayer. Uh, but thanks so much, man. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Everybody check out Theo's special and uh, say hi to him on Twitter. If you got any good hikes for him. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. This song is in place of a copyrighted song. I'm going to take your DVRs and watch it now. This is not happening. Every shut up, shut the fuck up, shut your fucking mouth. That's okay. That's actually a valid announcement. Oh, we got it. Anyway, so watch this. Set your DVRs. This is not happening. Tell your friends to set their DVRs. Tuesday nights, 12.30 a.m., Wednesday mornings. Uh, this week it's at 1 o'clock. Hopefully that'll be the only week that they give us fucking five days notice to tell everybody. Um, and that's it. It's been a great season so far. The end of the road tour. No, you may not. Yeah, everybody knows that too. By the way, I sat down next to a, a DEA officer, a drug enforcement. Uh, she got in my, my wheelchair. And I was like, you work here? She goes, yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, drug enforcement. She goes, you got any drugs on you? <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I just go, not right now. <laughs> not anymore. That's what I said. Not anymore. And she laughed. But... um I did. I did have drugs on me. I'm way better at it now. I'm calm. All right. So that's it, you guys. Don't forget to go to Theo's special. No offense. Um, someone's here. La, la, la. Um, okay, she's gone. I get so embarrassed when I'm doing this in front of people. I mean, 100,000 people listen to this podcast every week. 100,000. And if one person is listening to me record it live, I am mortified. Anyway, all right, let's go out. Um, this song is sung by a bunch of hikers, a bunch of tour guides, hike guides, whatever they're called, Sherpas, on Mount Kilimanjaro. Some song they used to sing. Maybe they still do. 
you might recognize it. You might recognize some of the words. Um, but yeah, enjoy. It's a pretty, it's a pretty fun song. Oh wait, right? Did I get everything? Don't forget San Diego, La Jolla this weekend, 11th and 12th, Irvine, 24th with Danny Shinodale and Jerron Horton, and then Tempe Improv, Mike Favorman's opening uh, at the end of the month. Tickets at AriTheGreat.com. Guys, for Theo Vaughn, this is Ari Shapiro's Captain Tank, episode 256, over and out. Goodbye. Where's your fear? He didn't pay for none of this goddamn music. Cheap ass fucking Jew.